Hello everybody and welcome to the winner finals of Winter Circuit. We are currently loading in to the Cenobite game on the first set synergy, not singularity, against the turtle. And we will see Zarka representing Team Eternal in the very first round against our survivor roster. Team Singularity, Hardwell, Xeno, V1, and Dorima. An absolute powerhouse of a survivor team. And it's going to be so, so exciting to see Zarka once again on the center bike. As he has proven himself countless of times, instantly finding the box as well. And also, as I have predicted in the campfire chat, we are going to see the original pain and barbed wire add ons in combination with a very interesting set of perks. We're not going to see a single generator defense perks, except of course, corrupt intervention, but that is a given. We're going to see Ben and Sloppy Butcher, Bamboozle, a chase perk that is extremely scarce to see on Cenobite, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I do definitely agree. This build is oh. super interesting. Also, to consider the fact that Eternal is the person, oh. the people who pick this. Hardwell gonna be taking a very unlucky chain and a drop, but he's able to make the window, now gonna run around. But again, this build is super interesting concerning that this is Eternal's pick. I don't think we've seen a build like this mm -hmm. on Cinnabite for a long time since in-game uh, builds were nerfed where the fact you can't run no-ed and no-way out at the same time. So this is very interesting definitely to see from Eternal bringing an in-game build. And Zaka's doing a great job at spreading the pressure here in this early game and forcing the survivors in a position where they really can't do much here. Yeah, and we've already talked, spoken about how much of a bane it can, how much of a bane this main building can be against the Morgan. We see the dodge barely coming out to buy Xeno now juking in the corner. It's also rare to see him on Xeno and Hardwell on the near because usually it's the exact other way around. But this survivor is already in lots of lots of trouble in the corner here on really unsafe players. Xeno gonna try his absolute hardest to play and but the chain does or does it land? It does not. So Xeno will be able to have some more time. But already two tags right from the get-go in the start of the game is going to be quite the setback for Team Singularity. Xeno will be able to somehow ma magically play this pallet in the corner and is now gonna once again oh! make it to the start of the mound, goes down on it. We see Please the pointer, so there's most likely going to come yeah. in the pallet safe. I'm expecting one survivor to be waiting on top of the balcony. I don't hear footsteps. I don't think they... Oh! They were silent! They were behind! They are oh. going to be able to prevent this first hook from coming through. We also hear a lot of progress on that upstairs generator as well. Zaka losing a lot of pressure. However, Zeno still wow. on the back of Zaka. We hear a little bit of a quick and quiet there on the vault, but no live. So Zaka still going to be on the back of Zeno here and should now take another down. No pallet to save him just yet. So this should be the first hook, but the first generator is also going to pop because he wasn't able to go and get that down in the Faster. And I don't think another one is going to be slow to follow as we yeah. still see two survivors healthy with at least one of them would have to be the one to be in, to, in position for that health save as Ooh. as Gooday has already pointed out didn't even hear anyone approaching so it could not have possibly been anyone in there. and we do see that second generator pop as, as well and unfortunately for Zaka Deadlock is not allowed in DVD League which is usually a very popular pick from Dead Dog Saloon where the generator on main building would be 99 and that would usually be the generator where Deadlock is always located towards but Zeno very unfortunately hooked in the basement but it's main building basement is also a very unique take that I've not seen uh, often in the past, usually basement will always be enforced in shack by the killer because it's so central and you can always defend the uh, the gallows uh, generator that we see virtual currently working on. That's another two. That's another generator at forty percent as well. Xeno will most likely be hitting second stage very soon. There should really not be any attempt whatsoever by any of these survivors to rescue Xeno before the second save uh, before the second stage. There might be a last ditch effort to get Xeno out of the basement before he does die inevitably as we do now see the second stage and that will be the fifth point for Eternal coming into the set. Still three generators remaining but it should be two very soon. Yeah, I think right here, what Synergy really needs to do is just focus on these generators, obviously. But Zaka is also knowing that, of course, he's an experienced killer. He has the knowledge that that's exactly what the survivors are going to do. That in-game build, I think, is really just trying to confirm either a 2 or 3k for his team. I think that's what Eternal is trying to set up here, is a win condition that is plausible. We see two survivors, however, are going to head towards this basement. Are they going to be able to get a save? That's the question, though, because Zaka mm. should be able to at least slow one of them down. One generator is going to get done. Uh, uh, 
we see Arima going down into the basement and Virtual taking a hit as well. Everybody injured right now. This is huge for Zaka. Yep. He's able to, to capitalize on this. He needs to hit the chain though and the stairs are going to prevent him from doing that. So Zeno is going to get out. Arima will go down, but uh, Zaka not going to get a, lo a lot of value out of this. He needs the death onto Zeno still and I think Hardwell will immediately start to try and kill Zeno to get him back to full right now. Zaka is going to take the fresh hook, but still, like I said, not a lot of value out of this trade because of how much gin pressure oh. the survivors currently do have. It's a very interesting decision by Xeno also to instantly get on the box despite the fact he's dead on a hook. Mm. And he, as you pointed out, he must definitely be the very frequently also the object of obsession. Must be the one that should be tunneled out very, very soon if Zaka wants to try to get a 4k against Singularity early on, but I don't think it's going to be it's, don't think it's going to be possible considering they managed to get the uh, get the Anuk out of basement. Of course, Arima will be going down for it in in exchange, but you know, out of basement, no one dead is going to be huge, and Virtual will also now be stuck uh, having to mend due to the original what? pain add-on. One thing though, look at this three gen. We have the main building, we have the gallows, and we have the gin on our right right here. I think with Bamboozle, oh. honestly, you have a lot of value on the main building mm. as opposed to going deeper into that quote unquote dead zone area near the gallows because even there, you have to break a lot of the pallets to make that area a dead zone. You have to break at least three or four, right? Oh. That wastes a lot of time. With Bamboozle, all you have to do is break one of the breakable walls. And if you're good in chase on that main building, and you can keep this three gen, which honestly might even be tighter than the one in the dead zone, and more consistent than the one in the dead zone as well, you might have a lot of value out of here. This is a very interesting tactic, and one I don't think we've ever seen on the Cinnabite. In the meantime, however, we'll see Arima hitting second stage as well, meaning two survivors are going to be on death hook. The question is, how is the survivor's gen progress? We see a sneak down into the Ow. basement by Zeno as well. This means both death hooks are in the basement. They're going to opt to hide in, in those lockers as the reset comes through. Zaka's going to head down there. He doesn't see any scratch marks. This should be a guaranteed death on at least one of them. We see the blood here, though, so Zaka should know who to go for. He picks Zeno a Rima was the one in the locker. No head-on plays will come through. So Zaka is just going to get the death onto Zeno here. Really risky from yeah. from Singularity. And I think this was honestly a mistake. Yeah, I don't fully understand the trade-off there either. But I also do have to disappoint you. The generator on main was popped at the start oh. of the game. So there was no 3 time that was being held here. It's a perfect 2-2 two -two split for Team Singularity. Exactly what they want to be at the exactly the position they want to be in. And Arima will also be the other dead on hook survivor that is now being in chase. So Virtual and Hard will spend all that time healing in the meantime. So those two last generators should not be very close to popping. And Zaka still has an ace up his sleeve as we see it with no, it's still in the back pocket in a beautiful mind game. You're moonwalking around that corner, making it seem like Z Zaka was expecting the early drop here. And Arima will go down on That's top of the death. bar. Has That's to go all death. the way around. But it is going to be another... Oh! <laughs> just a little bit of time wasted. Just a little bit? No, we do a little bit of time wasted. I thought he was still going to be on top of the bar, and that was that would have oh, been huge. Actually. But they're setting oh, up for the doors. Already in position. Yeah, they're they're ninety percent on gallows. Hardwell's oh. gonna get interrupted. This is definitely gonna be a three K because we have that know it. But it might be yep. a four K if Zok is able to interrupt that door. No, he's just going to commit to Hardwell here. So the three K will come through. Virtual's escape is almost guaranteed here in this moment. Oh. The balance landing will come through. Or sorry, not balance landing. That should have been live, I think, uh, coming out there yeah. since we did hear the drop down noise. So Zaka gonna take the hit on to Hardwell. Virtual, however, should be on the door and getting out right now. Mm. Yep, that's exactly what he's doing. So a 3k, a very good result from the Cinnabite. And honestly, uh, not what you want if you are Singularity here. Yeah, the down in the corner is going to secure the nine stages for Team Eternal against Team Singularity in the first round. As we see Virtual escaping, we also saw Zaka immediately picking up the survivor, knowing fully well that Virtual is most likely in position for the Exegate, which is exactly what happened. But that's already going to be 21 to 13 after the first set. It is going to be a freshman escape, which is going to be quite a lot of points. But still, in the upcoming game, Eternal must secure at least a two-man escape, must get at least eight stages, or not eight stages, four stages out of the gate in order to secure the win in, their, in the set that they picked. Yeah, so this is going to be very, very hard for Singularity, I think, honestly, because uh, this win condition to meet uh, 3k can really be doable with an in-game build.
honestly. You can hit a 3k. Because V1 had no hooks, or virtual, however you want to call them, because they have no hooks on them, uh, it makes the, the, the point swing 10 instead of just 7. You know, or instead of just nine, or however many it is, right? Uh, it, it's going to be a huge difference going into the game. Three points is a big difference when we're coming to the two top teams. So honestly, this game could go either way, and we'll have to see how it plays out after a break. Back in business in match number two is on set number one between Singularity and Eternal. Now with Singularity on the killer side. And as we've already teased it in the campfire chat, the absolute menace, Whizzle himself on the killer for Team Singularity against the survivor roster of Team Eternal. We've, we are seeing right now on screen Kaz, Dan, Nightlight, and Royalty, one of their most fearful roster. Unfortunately, no Zarko or Bubo Zavre so for now. Maybe we'll see them later, but we're already loading in now with the com potential comeback as we've just seen Eternal's killer Zarko was able to same box spot also in, as in the previous game with nine stages as Zarko was able to finish off his first game But and all that uh, the survivors of Team Eternal need now is four stages out of the gate and all that Rizzo needs is either 11 st is either 10 stage 10 to uh, um, is, is more than in nine stages and that yeah. would already be the win for team singularity in the first set it's gonna be extremely tight because nine stages that is really a result that you can do a lot with as we're already seeing the first hit onto dan thanks to that impaling wire that dan was trying to break free from around the tl but there's just going to be so many chains that the hit is going to come through dan instantly bolting shackle it and will throw it down as we see it right like solving the lament configuration in the background yeah, but Wizzle is pressuring all the Sky Iris here on this side of the map. It's mm. great that Dan is now taking the chase towards main building, because Wizzle had just had so much pressure on everybody right there. One thing I want to point out, while we're in the middle of this chase, now taking it over to the, towards the main building, we have a similar build as to what we're going to see on Zaka, except mm. that pain resonance is going to be switched out for that Noed. So, very interesting that he kept uh, both Sabi Butcher and Bamboozle. Bamboozle is like a chase perk on, on the Cenobite. It, it's very interesting to see. Uh, we'll now see a body blocking route from Royalty here too, because Wizzle Perfect. If they were able to use that bamboozle, probably would have caught up to Dan and gotten that down mm -hmm. right there. So very great from Royalty there to extend this chase just a little bit longer. The survivors now who were pushed previously by Wizzle should be starting on those generators probably around 20 to 30 percent right now. But it still seems Ooh. Dan is going to be very close to be going down here. He <laughs> tries for the ball, but he will get hit through that window. So Wizzle now has a great opportunity for this first hook to come through, and the survivors really shouldn't have any answer to it. Uh, that's that significant. <laughs> And I think Dan only went down there because of that impaling wire as we saw him trying to take the long route for that window. He dodging the chains that were coming from above from upstairs and unfortunately barely not going to be able to make it in time despite even hitting the fast forward whistle. Not going to be able to put the chain upstairs. And we are, as you pointed out, as you've pointed out, once again seeing a similar build, especially with that bamboozle that we didn't see used a single time in Zaka's game. I don't think Zaka vaulted a single time, a single window <laughs> in the previous game. So questionable use, but there might be some power play to it that I do not, that I can't grasp to understand. And we see Dan now hooked in the dead corner, unlike the basement hook that we saw very early on onto Zeno, that team Singularity was still able to get out of the basement somehow after Zeno has hit second stage, but still two survivors died right then and there. And that's going to be the first generator pop before that second stage even hits. So Eternal currently on a slightly better pace than Singularity, but Singularity were able to pop two generators before the third stage came to happen. Yeah, one thing to point out here, though, uh, uh, keeping in mind, is that, yeah, we do have Nightlight working on that main building engine. They're going to be able to pop that. Royalty and Nightlight Ooh. switch places. We saw Wizzle pressuring Royalty with that uh, that wire, trying to keep them in deep loop, <laughs> so they couldn't work on it. So, yeah, Royalty and Nightlight switch places. Wizzle, impossible for him to punish either of them since he's working on Dan. So, three split. generators are going to be popping. Everybody was working on their own generators. Wizzle was in a great position because all of them were only at 50% when he first got that hook onto Dan, but he chose to camp there, and that just gave Eternal all the time to work on those generators. But I'm... Oh, no. Yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna... Th what, what I was gonna talk about and that's exactly what I was fearing. We see a very close three gen right around Dan, so Wizzle in a very good position. If they do not get Dan out of the situation, 
could very well end up with a 4k on one generator sphere because Wizard is in perfect position to snipe all of these three generators and with that original pain so basically survivors that are injured can't even work on it because they will be put into mend every single time and i don't think our survivors have enough time to go for the save yeah they, they don't will be the time. Sacrifice. And that's so huge big as well that's huge for whistle and a huge setback for team eternal yeah royalty now gonna be working on mingle building cover he's going to uh, bring Wizzle over there. He might be a little bit unsafe. He might even take the down right here. He's going to try to use the balance ending. It won't work, but his positioning is great right here. Kaz could be on the water tower as we're speaking, working on that three gen. We see Nightlight working on the one next to the, uh, the street, and yep, there's Kaz. Already 70% on the generator. He's about to break the three gen. Wizzle is going to try and greed for this hook. This will probably be a pain resonance hook as well, as Wizzle's going to try and make the distance. He does get over there. The hook will come through. That is going to be the pain resonance. So Kaz is going to be a little bit uh, of regression applied to him, but Wizzle, once again, going to take, take the chase on the Nightlight. He has no idea where Kaz is. He has no idea yeah, what the pressure on that water tower gin is right now and i hate to be the bringer of bad news but i do believe eternal basically if they if there's not going to be a huge comeback from their survival side i'm pretty sure they might lose this game because of one missed skill check by dan on the hook extremely unfortunate but that's the reason why they didn't have enough time to come in for the two-man save as you see nightlight close to shack completely far away from royalty on the hook we do see that pen ultimate generator popping but still that three gen with that hook inside of it is looking beyond grim for team eternal right now oh yeah i just i didn't even realize there was two three gens there was one where they were all lined up on each other all down the street and then one with the main building i didn't even see that oh, one all save yeah whistle was in a great position there able to use two two three gens so either of the generators that either the survivors broke were going to be horrible so Wizzle actually did make a good decision there uh, picking to defend the closer three gen and now it's going to be immediately back onto royalty as well as there's not a lot of opportunity to take body blocks here unless you know, that balanced landing is going to be ruining Wizzle's day uh, and now we're going to have to continue the chase onto Kaz who is going to be a fresh hook as well so spreading your uh, stages here honestly might be the best idea you might want to get Kaz uh, either dead now or a hook onto Nightlight as well as if you're able to just tunnel out one of these people and then get a kill into the end game that isn't royalty, then you'll have 11 stages because royalty does have that pressure to run through. And that last second hook, unhook that Team Eternal was able to secure is exactly what they had to do in that situation to bring it back even in the, in the slightest. So Kaz's stun on the water tower well, had absolutely perfect timing as you saw Nightlight in the meantime rotating back right over to the generator will now Everyone unfortunately injured. inevitably take the hit and that is going to le render everybody injured. So I, there might actually be a push on... No, they will be going for the heal so there's not going to be a double push on these generators. They're not going Whistle to find the reset too! Aggressive. Whistle, Whistle, oh! Going all the way around finding the reset. A very popular spot for, reset, for the resets as well in the corner here so Kaz just healed will now be forced to take another hit for royalty who is gonna go for the board and we finally see bamboozle value but it will be countered by balance standing but wizard just gonna stay up top knowing exactly that he can perfectly zone bamboozle uh, balance standing this way royalty will still make enough distance that bamboozle is not going to wear out anytime soon so we should see Kaz coming for the body block very very soon though he does make the window downstairs and the wall is still to be broken so royalty should be able to change up with a couple fillers on the main road yeah, but I think Wizzle does have some great uses of his chain here, uh, available for him. He's going to use one right there. I think that's going to prevent him from being able to make this pallet. And yep, that is true. Ooh. And the reset also happened right now. So while we could have seen a push for that main street gen, I think that would have honestly gotten the most value. Oh. <laughs> An attempt for uh, no. a, a missed uh, uh, pallet save there too is going to cost Eternal so much because you don't have any progress on this street gen that you could have gone for. You just went for a reset. You tried to go for the pallet save and now you're taking an injury on top of that basically essentially you're wasting uh you know 18 seconds of your time or however many uh seconds of your time with the push it really takes that is going to mean that a lot of time is now in Wizzle's favor where beforehand if you had taken the opportunity Ooh. to just push that gin out i think you would have been in a much better situation kaz also going to be taking a deep wound even more time wasted for the survivors here the question is where is nightlight is he saving yes he is sneaking by at exactly the moment that he needed to nightlight's going to take the save Wizzle's just going to take the injury and immediately go back onto royalty however royalty mm. is in a great situation here he's going to take the, uh, the the original pain meaning that he's going to be in men no uh, mm. availability for gt or for off the record wow. so taking the down no opportunity for DS either so this will still just be the death off of royalty but Nightlight had a great 
great play there. Unfortunately, Royalty wasn't able to make up for it. Yeah, that's where Original Pain is really tremendously underrated at how powerful it is to tunnel out a survivor. You can land one chain on the survivor that has just been unlocked, and that's gonna by borrowed time gone instantly on the base kit and during status effect that you are applied uh, upon the unlock. Gonna unfortunately put the chain downstairs here, and I really think the only thing that Eternal can realistically do now is play for a hatch. But that's going to be so difficult considering Whistle is going to know where everybody is thanks to the Lament configuration. We see Kaz most likely on his final run around main building. Both of these survivors are also still fresh, so actually, if even one of these survivors escapes out of the exit gate, it will not be enough as Zarka was able to get nine stages in the previous game. But all survivors popped the last, uh, pop the, uh, popped all generators. So that even if there was a hatch escape at one generator remaining, there would still be a two point advantage for Team Singularity, so it's going to be really difficult for these two remaining survivors coming up with a plan. They need to try their absolute hardest now to realistically pop this last generator, but it's going to be barely, barely possible even. Especially now, considering Light 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 is stuck on this in the, in the corner and will go for the Lemon configuration in the meantime as Night Light will go down, and that's going to be the seventh stage of the game. Yeah, this is not looking good for Eternal. Uh, I believe if both of them don't get out, like you just said, now, since Nightlight has been cooked, this will be the win for Singularity. They're doing great here in this position. Whistle able to make a comeback, honestly. We saw Eternal's gen pressure was insane off the start. Now mm. Light and Light's mm. on the back hook. Now Kaz isn't working on any of these generators. He's also injured. There's nothing for him to go and reset himself with. And Whistle has just oh. found him at one of the weakest pillars here on Dead Dog. Yeah, and we really see how every small mistake can snowball to these, uh, to, to these lengths here, as we've seen. Dan missing one skill, uh, one skill check on the hook, and then on top of that, we also have the soul hook in the middle of the incredible three gen in the corner, which is just going to secure the 4k at one generator remaining for Team Singularity on Eternal's pick on top of that. So Rizzo playing his absolute mind out once again with the comeback after those three generators were popped so unbelievably early. We see Wizard is extremely happy about this result right now, filleting Kaz on the hook with his iconic outfit. And yeah, that's just going to be both survivors dying on the hook as of course the Wizard is banned against, or the Wizard or Kobe is banned against the Cenobite of Kobe in general also. But yeah, that's definitely going to be at the end of this set with Singularity taking the first one on, once again to reiterate on Eternal pick as well. Yeah, this is an insanely good result for Singularity. We talked about how their Survivor roster is able to do insane things. And honestly, the Survivor roster did worse in the early game than Eternal did. They were able to yeah. make a massive, massive uh, gin difference. Eternal was. Uh, they turned three gins for that first hook. Second stage had just hit by the time that that first uh, wow. gen generator got done. But then Whistle, surprisingly, and super surprisingly, on again, on Eternal's pick, able to make a comeback in the endgame, kept two three gins, forced those survivors to pick yeah. two evils, had the opportunity to just control the entire game. Before then, before we saw uh, Dan die on that hook, before he missed that skill check, before any of that, Eternal was in a way, way better situation. They were able to do so much good there. And somehow, Singularity is able mm. to make a comeback on Eternal. Again, Eternal's pick. Yeah. That is something that also, shouldn't be understated. That is an yeah. insane, insane accomplishment here for Singularity. And now we'll be moving on into that artist set as well, which is Singularity's pick. They're going to keep the tempo here. They're going to mm. play Killer once again immediately after this. Eternal's got to think of something. Yeah, especially also with how close that Cenobite pick was. But now, yeah, as you said, and as we've also usually, as we also usually call that out, Eternal's sort of losing the momentum here, especially now that we are advancing to his team Singularity's pick with the artist on Wrecker's Yard. A super exciting map to see this kill on, and especially between these two teams. So I'm more than looking forward to seeing them play in the upcoming set, and we will be back after a very short break. So until then, stay tuned. Ache number two, everybody. Call me Kubrick, because this needs to be perfect. As we see at the top of the screen, the minus two like for it. Team Singularity. So due to a wrong, due to the wrong map being set, we had, we were just loaded in on Cornfield, but it's supposed to be Wreckers Yard. 
for the artist, and that's what we are now loading into, hopefully, with <laughs> once again V1 now on the artist, the artist main himself against the roster of Team Eternal. We see Zarka now replacing Kaz, almost an acronym, I just realized. Just add, remove the A, and then you've got reverse Kaz. <laughs> and then we've also have we also have Nightlight, Dan, and Royalty once again will now have to try the absolute hardest as we've seen them lose their own pick. But now we see Singularity coming in with a disadvantage into theirs. So we see the minus two for them due to the wrong uh, due to the wrong map. But we set up the scarecrow on the cornfield. So the crows turn you turn that real quick. We see the first crow will already be set up on the win on the first palace here. Zoning Nightlight away from it immediately because they <laughs> would secure it. But an early drop on the very safe tile on all uh, on, uh, yes, the other yes, first place maps now. And the pre drop of the Shackpal as well. Our Cyber will instantly jump into the locker here to, to break free from the toys instantaneously. Yeah, they're doing a really good job at keeping this chase as long as possible. However, they are going a, a, a long ways across the map and now dying next to another teammate because of that. Virtual is going to get a little bit of pressure off of this uh, because of just how much distance Nightlight had to cover during that chase. He had a pretty decent first chase, but he's also going to be put into the basement. Yep, unless there's a breakout onto Zaka here, which I don't think even if there is going to be a breakout, that it will matter that much. And that's going to be already a wow. basement hook at zero generators done and not a lot of progress yeah. either yeah and also those perks are just exactly what v1 needs in this situation merciless storm is going to be so powerful right from the get-go we the track into the wall we see virtual, virtual completely should just go down here yeah that's another down it's gonna be the down in the corner as they instantly go for the basement save however this a is a good play time for team eternal but the yeah it's not gonna be big here because there's no progress whatsoever on generators exactly what loyalty could have been done in the meantime exactly i was gonna say this is a really really good play to go in and get that basement save but dan's gonna take an injury nightlight's probably still gonna go down virtual we know is cracked on the crows as we've seen from the chase onto zaka so <laughs> This is going to be uh, a very, very insane pressure still on virtual side. Zaka in the meantime will get picked up, but Royalty is the only one who can really work on the generators right here. Nightlight's going to go down, and Zaka's going to get reset as well. There is so wow. much pressure, wow. and none of it is coming from Eternal. Yeah, that's two stages, and Nightlight isn't even going to be the decisive strike in this game either. That's two stages, and not a single generator has been popped on the same person with that basement hook as well. But as we've seen in the previous Cenobite set, basement hooks aren't always the best that you can go for, considering if they, the hook is upstairs, then you can also control the generators in the meantime. We see a really nice line of two generators here as well, so Virtual... And what? He's getting found to too! Right next to the hook! Right, going to be found in the corner, but Virtual doesn't have to put down commit that to many close here because he can just snipe down in a clear line. Dan is going to come in for that last second save, uh, but, and Dan but we can, we can turn on Nella instead. Nightlight. But now Nightlight is a free time. was not the last second save, but not now Nightlight is going to be a free time layout. Oh, we are going to see the balance landing right behind Crane, but Virtual will once again just be able to lock this area down with the Crows places them extremely far away, however. He can't do anything. Away, if he drops, he dies. Yeah. If, he, if he goes yep. to the pallet, he dies. There's nothing he can do here. There's not going to oh. be any time for off the record or anything for BT. Oh, but Nightlight is able to call Virtual's bluff. He was out of sight for just a couple of seconds, and because of that, he was able to throw oh. down the pallet, oh. wasting a couple more seconds. One generation is gonna get done a body block could come through he doesn't make it to any windows but he does make it to a pallet like you said pallet save is probable to come in right now I think there was a survivor nearby going for oh I was gonna say going oh, for a body block oh but uh, no 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 one going for the hook we did see scratch marks nearby someone was going for the pallet save but they weren't there in time the death is just all that's gonna happen the survivors were able to get one generator but nothing else. There's no other real pressure on any of these generators. Yep. Virtual is in a great position and immediately he's going to start wow. in a chase with Dan as well. Yeah, and also with that scored look in the meantime, that's going to instantly also apply exert pressure onto the generators while Virtual was going for the tunnel out onto Nightlight. That's a killer at four generators reigning. With Dan with a perfect 99 sprint boost here as well. Really nice in position. Oh, he hits Dan! Perfect that. timing! No, Mat no, oh. Matai no Matai's baby shoes, but the snipe will still come through. And they do manage to put the den right in Virtual's face. Zarka is going to take them one for it, but will find safety right across the pallet as we see Virtual now practically leaving the place as well. These generators are surprisingly far 
uh, progressed, however, already. But I don't think the, the, or the realistically Ooh. speaking, the survivors are oh, a great fake on the pallet kick. Realistically speaking, that's it's so bad. Cool. Cool. against Artis on Newton's yard. That could be a four at one or two generators remaining. But Eternal somehow pulling this back. Yeah, this is insane from uh, Eternal, able to just put the pressure on these generators. We see another one pop right now as well. Dan, however, still will go down. We have a death. There's two generators remaining. We have another hook. But Virtual, coming from the strong start that he had, is now kind of on the back foot, honestly. Unless he's able to get a really quick down onto Zaka here, or prevent the unhook from coming in from Royalty and get an intro onto Royalty and then force the reset onto the survivors. Virtual is still in kind of a tricky situation because if you 4K at all generators completed, you still have the minus two. You still have the corn map penalty. Yep. You s that that's going to be huge if you get, if all the generators get done because that's very easy for a survivor team to accomplish on any killer. So completing all the generators is something that you definitely want to prevent if you are virtual. I must also confess I'm quite awestruck at how incredibly productive Team Eternal have been on these generators. This is something that most teams struggle against with artists because there's so much global pressure. But we see Eternal with that kill and four generators remaining and we saw at least two survivors having to a come to Nightlight's aid as well. And we see Scorcher, we see Merciless Storm, but they still managed to pop three vents and two more generators are also already close to completion. That is absolutely ludicrous. And we still also have one perk for the or virtual still has one perk up its sleeve that is yet to be revealed to the survivors on Eternal. Also, that generator on the truck is going to be extremely helpful because you have a lockup practically one meter away from it. So Zaka is just going to spam it. He's going to commit to it though. He's going to commit. He goes down. He doesn't get the cut. He doesn't get the. He doesn't get the gin. That that's not going to be good for them. Royalty is going to be the next one in chase. This could be all going away. We are about to be at one generator, but the commit I don't think was the right play because now we're at risking that everyone is going to die at two. Yeah, merciless storm as well. You had to commit to there, or else the gin was going to be blocked. That's why I was talking about earlier in the campfire chat. Artist is so good at getting a central hook and just stopping all pressure that the survivors had. Ooh. There was nothing that Zaka could do. He can't go in for the save. He's injured. He has to stay on that generator. But if he gets off uh, because of the crows, then Merciless Storm's going to activate. He's going to waste even more time. Virtual is going to get the death on the Dan. So he tried to commit, but it wasn't enough. Virtual able to land his shots, able to get the down. And now the chase onto royalty will go and the down will go onto him as well, trying to complete that last generator. Just a few seconds before, but still, even running all the way over there, not going to be enough, even with a minus two. We're going to see that Singularity is going to 4K at two generators wow. remaining. This is what we are, need to see from the top team in this scene. This is what competitive DBD at top level looks like. Wow, wow, wow. And we do have to take into consideration this is practically a 4k at one generator remaining due to that minus two that Singularity received for picking the wrong map. But that was so unfortunate for Zaka trying to commit to that generator in order to get another generator pop because that would have been the 4k at zero generators remaining thanks to the minus two. But Zaka a bit overconfident with that Merciless Storm and underestimating how f how committed V1 is to spamming the crows facing towards the truck here. And now all Virtual needs to do is find the last survivor remaining slugged on the ground. Also, not the worst idea by Team Eternal also. Zaka going down in the corner already created that initial dis distance between the killer and himself. So Zaka had all the time in the world to crawl wherever. So this survivor could really be in any corner. But we already saw how close all the hooks were. So even if the survivor, if Zaka has crawled all the way to the corner, oh, there I think we hear hooks him. aplenty. And we hear him. We do hear him. The Ada sound not going to be enough. We see now waiting out royalty to die on the hook. So Zaka will also instantly die on the hook. Despite the fact there is no deliverance against artists. Or it is not allowed. So Zaka, Zaka still is going to remain on the ground here. We're going to see his virtual placing a crow down. Facing our survivor as well. But Unbreaker oh. is also not allowed. But now waiting for the game. Could be the adrenaline play however. It is not going to be. And Why that is the... definitely. Why do you close the. No idea. Uh... Well, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I guess so. I, I I don't know why you would close the uh, the hatch there. Honestly, oh, he might wiggle out. It might be a hook dead zone. That might be honestly the reason why. Maybe he was scared of a hook dead zone there. Oh, he is. Yeah, he's kind of far from well, all the hooks. But 
I think he still makes this hook. I, I, I'm yeah, pretty sure I so that too. he still. I think he was just being safe uh, in case of a hook dead zone there, honestly, because he yep. was kind of away from everything, and we saw that uh, Royalty was on the hook wow, already wow, wow. staying there. So very well played from him, trying to be as safe as possible, not even allowing uh, a last second uh, hook dead zone there to affect anything. A final score of uh, 26 to 6 here is going to be uh, very, very good for Singularity, but not as good as it possibly could have been. We could have seen 28 come out from them if they weren't there to mm. uh to pick that uh corn map so very good from singularity very good uh in, in general uh from them but we're still going to need a good survivor performance they're going to mm. need to complete four generators to win here against eternal in order to uh upset the fact that they have that minus two or complete all the generators if they want to win this round because four generators would still just be a tie thanks to that minus two and that's the difference there that's why penalties do matter that's why yep. you need to set the correct map and uh, honestly singularity might have made a huge mistake with that they had an insane game right now but eternal knowing that they have this win condition in mind is going to play around that and that's really going to affect what singularity is able to do on the survivor side and that early 4k was crucial for v1 because of the minus two but we're going to see how the set plays out after a short break with eternal on the killer side and there has to be a really strong performance to not put this 204 team singularity so stay tuned see ya after a very short break Hello, hello, and welcome to set number two, match number two. We are going to witness the final artist game between Team Singularity and Eternal. Nightlight says Jen Dobre as we see Hardwell, Zeno, V1, and Granout on the Singularity roster. Eternal now on the killer side after we've seen an impeccable performance by V1 in the previous game due to a very unfortunate minus two for setting the wrong map. That is why it says 26 at the top and not the perfect 28 score that you would usually receive. Very well, in, well deserving for a 4k. But so, so yeah, Nightlight does have a very small, a, a very decent chance still at beating them on the Wreckers Yard here. Art is very powerful on these small maps that don't have any good elevation except Singularity get super, super lucky and get two hills and a crane. As we see Nightlight standing on the crane looking at the shot only, not the crane. But that would have been a very funny double whammy. <laughs> and we see already two survivors stuck in the corner on truck will both be found. Virtual will... Going, we'll have the sprint burst perfectly timed, but Zeno, oh, Grenout in this case on the near, will be the one found first, has the incredibly powerful pallet, and is going to make, make a very weird decision of just greeting it. Oh, come on, it's so safe, just drop it and play it. <laughs> but Grenout instantly going to go oh, for, for the, the shack build here, and we're instantly seeing a for the people play in the middle, which means that Zeno probably is the player with the stacked second chances, so if Nightlight goes for the planet on this survivor, then that will be the size to strike and dead hard probably oh dead hard i think it's banned actually but yeah so instead the base will be taken trend no look on zeno on the injured survivor the bird, and then really no like he might get hit down so in the corner there yeah the night light oh what <laughs> yeah the snipe comes he through through the four lane Unbelievable. Yeah, he, he had set it up at the window and Zeno willingly ran into the window, into the bird, taking that bird hit. I think maybe it was unintentional since, you know, you wow. normally, you can't really get hit through the window by killer powers, but the crow has a large hitbox. So if you run by the window and the crow is set up at that window, you will take it. So Zeno took that bird, ran into the corner, and Nightlight could just perfectly set uh. up his snipe there onto the player. Is that a 5 clip? That Nightlight has? I'm pretty sure it is. There's is this only one generator in the far There's only one there's only two generators in the far corner. And he has clear line of sight on all five generators here. And even on the sixth one that he's going to right now. So Nightlight, if he is able to play the four gen and uh, get the 4K on, I believe, two generators left, then that would still be the win for Eternal. So it's gonna be really close. He has the arm to play around, but we see Nightlight so dangerously saved. far away from the hook here, however. Yeah, he's gonna he commit to, to virtual, he's gonna take them one virtual just going to instantly bolt straight into Nightlight's face to not get two-tapped by the crow. Yeah, 
Zeno getting saved there is going to set Nightlight back a little bit here, I think. Yeah. You know, you really want that tunnel as fast as possible. We're already going to see a Jin popping. It's going to be one of the ones in the corner, however. So the survivors haven't started on that theoretical five Jin over in Nightlight's area. Zeno also going to immediately come back over after mm -hmm. taking a reset and try to uh, harass Nightlight, try to take the body blocks, try to prevent Virtual from going down. But honestly, Virtual going down in this area isn't really that bad of a thing. He's going down yeah. on the opposite side yeah. of the map from the five Jin. This is going to be a very safe unhook if Nightlight, uh, you know, chooses to leave, which he definitely should, and uh, at the same time, the survivors are all going to be able to work on the gens across the map. However, we do see on the right side of our screen, that's going to be a pain resonance point scoring event right there, meaning that Nightlight is going to prevent that gen from popping just now unless he hit the generator right here, which would have been devastating for him. Cargo also going to be the one to take the next chase. Also, still, outside of this 5 gen, the survivors should have a chance to just work on these as much as possible if they've recognized it yet, but that's the question. Do they know that there is a 5 gen? Have they scouted out the map and called all these gens to recognize that yet? That's the question. I'm fully con I still can't fully comprehend the decision making behind Night Eye committing to the place on the exact opposite corner of all these generators here when he had that hook in the corner onto Zeno. Probably also the bearer of the decisive strike as we see very aggressive playstyle from him. So if the second stage would have been secured, that would have been huge by Nightlight because Artis is very time. capable of two tapping some minus ammo, and we already see three generators pop in the meantime. Hardo is now gonna go down in the corner once again, but that is no tunnel out, and the forge lane is basically being broken right now as well. So Nightlight with a huge setback after Zeno's immediate ammo. Yeah, this is not going to be very good for Nightlight. You know, he had that 5 gen, but I don't think he was cognizant of it and willing to play around it. I think that's the issue right there. He didn't really take advantage of it in the time that he had, and the survivors might not have even known about it either. They weren't really playing like they knew about it. They only broke two of the gens in that, uh, uh, or not even two, one of the generators that's in that 5 gen area. Yeah, he still has four there so he still has the opportunity to play around this if he recognizes that because the survivors also weren't cognizant of that the question is is he going to be able to realize that is he going to be able to play around that and is he going to have the time to now that he only has three fresh hooks not even three hooks individually not even one person on death hook three fresh hooks so much hang time is left on yeah. each one of these survivors we'll see the save come through nightlight also is going to have a body block opponent in the form of virtual here so hardwell taking the crows doesn't really matter because virtual is going to take that hit hardwell's going to hop in the locker now nightlight has to play this tile normally he misses the crows once again that's going to allow for even more time however mm. hardwell kind of played his angles there a little bit wrong he's going to gain or lose too much oh. distance but the balance landing play right there huge from him not enough to make enough di distance but that was so so good for him to use that little ledge that you have right there that allows you to use balance landing off those stairs. I don't think he actually managed to proc the balance landing there because he would have been spot free if you had managed really? to. Really? So I, I thought he was going fast I, though. I don't think he was so that truck once again destroying everybody's hopes A little bit inconsistent. Because I, <laughs> Because I also have to speak from experience, that truck always disappoints me. There is a spot mm -hmm. to proc balance landing on it, but yeah, it's, it's, it's not the balance landing as we also hear from our match stuff in the background. Zeno once again going to use that for the people. I do think maybe Nightlight was grading for the down on virtual to get a score drop and to also avoid the for the people heals in the meantime. Ooh, but yeah. but Zeno is also but Zeno is also the for the people player, so that could have optimally been the player to tunnel out in the corner. So it's Ooh. really. Oh, but the snipe does come through onto virtual, but still, I don't hands. see any scenario in which Singularity loses this. Being able to break the generators, there's not well, a single both Zeno and is on hit, except for Harbour in the corner. Yeah, he, Nightlight has to snipe practic basically everybody right now at the same time in order to win, turn this around. But I don't think it's Only looking realistic whatsoever. Go. As we see all of these survivors splitting on the generators in the corner, they shouldn't really make an attempt at saving Hardwell. But yeah, with no Merciless Storm, we do see one survivor here, however, but that should still be one survivor in each of these generators. Mm -hmm. And if one of them pops, that's already going to be the win for Singularity. Yeah, but you have to keep in mind, there's not a lot of progress in the generators. We've checked them again and again. The only one that could potentially have a lot of progress oh, okay. is not this one, but the one far back uh, on the corner of the map. Virtual also going to go down near that map. This could be a pain resonance. This could be even more pressure applied to that back generator if it doesn't pop right now in our faces and we're hearing it. We're going close to it. No progress, essentially, on that generator. No progress on any of these generators 
There still could play out for Nightlight. Xeno's injured. Grinout could be found. We see Scratch works of somebody. That's probably Grinout. He's publicly rotating around. Yep, it was Grinout. We hit yep. him with the crows as well. He hops in the locker, however, so he's going to be able to counterplay that. But Nightlight still has all the pressure here in the situation because he's right next to the hook. He's set up. This is what Artist excels at. Nightlight wasn't able to set this up for the majority of the game, but now he has it. A three gen and a hook inside of that three gen yep. and the potential to use his crows on each one of these players. Grinout's going to go in for the save, which is exactly what he needs to do since he is healthy however he doesn't get it before taking the one for one that's going to be huge for nightlight once again because now everybody's going to be injured instead of having two people who are injured get away we're going to have one person on the hook as well this is so good for nightlight we might see this turning around right now yeah and also nightlight in contrast to our previous player v1 had the knower did not have access to the call of brian so nightlight now exactly has the two perks or the three perks even of agitation perfectly in combination that are Perfect to uh, to really torture survivors on these three gens, but we see that Team Singularity are trying their absolute hardest with Xenon Virtual. The last two standing are trying to throwing their absolute hardest to put one of these generators as he's a virtual go down. And I don't think Xeno is leaving it here. It's gonna oh, that's gonna be the save in the meantime. So Grenard will be rescued by Xeno, but that should just be another agitation into the scourge because Nightlight otherwise would have probably been considered. And the death as well. Survivors that's two survivors left. The, oh, this is gonna be impossible to break. Death and the call of Brian. A 2v1 in the three gen. Yeah, this is almost impossible, especially with Call of Brian, especially with Artist, able to attack all of these generators at the same time from anywhere on the map, anywhere inside of that region. Essentially, Nightlight has all the pressure. Call of Brian is going to play overtime into this situation. You don't even need eruption. You can just play with that Call of Brian next to these generators, force the birds, force survivors off of them. They're both injured. They have to go for the reset, but it doesn't even matter because Zeno's going to be found on the edge map. He was trying to go for a greedy play on this generator. He has to play around now the pallet gym, but is Nightlight able to get the down? That's the question. Grinnell's going to start on another generator that generator by the hill does have a decent amount of progress the firecracker is going to be used to waste that crow it's going to go away not xeno can now play around it he takes it wide though nightlight causes blood is able to catch him out in the open the question now it's all up to grin out is he going to be able to finish that last generator nightlight's definitely going to pick this up and grin out no. isn't committing to it he's going to go for the hatch he's going to go for the exegates he can't mm -hmm. go for that generator he's going to either have to go for the save the exegates or that hatch right now it's too late and honestly, we see the blood. Does Nightlight see it though? That's the question. Is he able to find where this survivor is? It doesn't look like it. He's lost him for a couple seconds. The save could, save could come through pretty soon. The scratch marks are yep. seen. Nightlight knows exactly where both of them are. They're now going to be trying to play around this, the bottom side of the map. Not a lot of resources are used on this side, so they have a great opportunity to do that. But Xeno still needs to go all the way across the map, all the way across the killer, and play around it. And Grinnell oh, oh, oh. just went down thanks to a wonderfully placed crow previously placed on that loop by Nightlight. Xeno, however, oh. able to reset himself, probably with an inner strength. Yeah, that's actually perfect that Xeno is the one that was on the Oh no, as well because a second this, wind. Oh, but will be found. Yeah. But Xeno would have been in perfect position here. The healthy survivor being the last yes, one live standing still, he couldn't make it over there. Play. If he uses but the yeah, correctly. But now be forced to use life and the crow will be dodged. Oh, right, coming in Nightlight goes away. Straight into Nightlight, trying to make it Trying to play around the Grinnell. hatch. Trying to make a play against yeah, exactly. the hatch. That's exactly what he was going for. He's suspecting that Grinnell will let go on that hook right now and, and go for the hook. Xeno might have been able to use the life to get there first, but now Xeno is going to be found in the edge map. Nightlight's also near the edge map. He's going to take it in one. Does Grinnell die here? That's the question. He's missed one nope. skill check. He still needs to miss nope. another, and he still needs to wait for the death animation as well. Xeno isn't going to be having time. He doesn't have balance landing either. He's going to go down oh, here oh, over. Oh, oh. If they do in one, he's going to be in one on top of the hatch. Ah, oh, but he no. goes towards the hook instead of towards so the shack. Close. So not close enough to go to the shack. This is going to be a tie. We're going to have to replay this artist set. Yep, that was extremely smart decision making by Zeno, but it was barely not enough if Grenard had just died about two or three seconds earlier. That could have potentially been the hatch escape, with Zeno perfectly leading Nightlight back onto the hill. But yeah, I, I constantly see comments on the YouTube channel, when is there going to be artists? Now going to be two sets of artists due to this tie now with the minus two. If V1 had not had that minus two in the previous game, this would have now easily been the, uh, barely been the win for Team Singularity. And it's just barely going to be off now. 34 to 34, a perfect score for both teams here for, for the tie. So that is going to be... Uh, going to be the tiebreaker, or the not the tiebreaker, but the replay of the artist set right after a short break when we will be back once again with artists on the Wreckers Yard until a decision has been made between these two contenders.
Wait, this isn't plague. Welcome back to round number two of set number two with artist on Rekus Yard. Well, you see it at the top of your screen, 34 to 34 between Singularity and Eternal. An exact tie in the previous set due to a minus two for Singularity upon having picked the wrong map when V1 was playing Artist for Singularity. And Nightlight somehow barely taking the back in the uh, in the previous game, despite having a very rough early game. But the three done with the score looks and the perfect decision making were able to secure the 4k for Nightlight as well and Eternal which will bring them back now and is not going to put them down by 2 to 0 and it's going to remain at 1 to 0 with them being given another chance to tie the score and it would be a 1 to 1 if Eternal manages to win the set this time but they do have to beat V1 on Arts and Nightlight once again needs to get a promising result because we all know know how experienced V1 is on the Artist Killer. We're going to see first Crow being hit. Two pallets have also already been sacrificed and we see a different approach of perks by Nightlight now. We're not going to see the Call of Brian unlike in the previous Isn't game and a... this time it's going to be the No One Escapes Death. Not, I, you know, I, I think that's the smart play because you don't always get a 5 gen every game, you know? That was very lucky for Nightlight to, you know, get that uh, situation. Even though he didn't really be able, wasn't able to play around it that effectively in the early game, the Call of Brian really helped him out in that late game, but you won't always have that and Nightlight making the smart decision to instead go with something more consistent, which is going to be that no-ed virtual. I'm gonna take the crows now, should be able to get shotgun as well, but no! Narrowly <laughs> avoids that! The Neo time what? dodge right there, bullet time activating <laughs> for virtual, able to get away, now all the way over to Shaq, Nightlight setting up the crows, but it'll be a second too late, oh, actually I lied! <laughs> Goes down somehow. Virtual dodges back into the crow's line of sight, and because of that, he will go down. Zeno oh. tries to attempt the cracker save, but it won't come through. We'll see now. Zeno oh, getting a hit out. as well. Breakout could potentially be played right here, but Nightlight is still going to be able to make this hook, and it's going to be a hill hook as well. Which honestly, on artist, I don't think is that big of an oh, advantage oh. since you can't really use your yeah. power effectively on that hill. But Zeno is nearby. If Nightlight goes for him, that would be huge. I was going to comment on now how after that ping do uh, after that uh, after that Neo dodge is uh, virtual our beloved zero ping player, but then getting completely destroyed through the shock window here, straight through the win uh, straight through the wall here. Nightlight with a very lucky hit with the crow, but I've definitely seen worse. The first generator pop finally comes through. Nightlight also knows exactly where one of the survivors are. Zeno going to take an a, an injury due to uh, or trying to take a hit for virtual, so that Nightlight was not able to get to bank the basement hook right from the get go. Nightlight is going to harass these two generators now, knowing fully well that there are survivors nearby. We see one survivor now running away, but has the locker as the at, at their disposal, so there's not going to be a crow hit just yet. We see Granot very aggressive on the save. Here. See Nightlight placing down a crow, but this is going to be the one man save, and the trade comes through! But from not hitting second stage, it was one second away! That's so unfortunate, that's going to be a huge setback for Nightlight, because if a survivor is unhooked at that point in the at that point on the hook, it's essentially 60 seconds wasted. We see Nightlight once again getting the hook onto Granard's behind the truck now. That's going to be the first stage on Granard as well. That's only going to be two stages in total. And one generator has already been popped. So Nightlight once again going to try to get uh, the generators. Uh, once again harass the generators using the crows. And Granard slowly parachute on the hook. But that's why it's most likely going to get rescued very, very soon. Considering Nightlight is already on the opposite side of the A very beautiful snipe onto Virtual. But barely got to get out of range to be in tear down. But it's yeah. going to be there nonetheless. Oh my god! That was so, so good from Nightlight. Able to set up that situation. However, the survivors aren't doing bad at all. Uh, you know, Singularity here are doing a great job at spreading their pressure on the generators. Oh, virtual only really going to be in their second stage too. Yeah, like you said, could have been a death. Could have been way better here for Nightlight. He wasted, like you said, essentially a full 60 seconds trying to camp out Virtual mm -hmm. because he got greedy, went for that hit on the ground, tried to get a one for one and the second stage at the same time, but it cost him. He was able to get it. Uh, get the save a second before that second stage hit. But now he's going to be able to pressure two survivors, but it doesn't really matter. Another gen will pop. The survivors are looking so good right here, as again, we're at a situation where two generators remain and only three stages have been achieved. However, this time, Virtual is on death hook. 
but the survivors know that they're going to be playing around Virgil. And they're going to make sure that he's able to survive as much as possible. So Nightlight needs to try and counter them on all their plays up till now. <laughs> And does also have another three then available. He's gonna lunge for Breno, but he's gonna go back for it. Breno oh, he's walking! The no, the body block gets it! It's huge! The body block perfectly comes in! Virtual should die! He just, just has to wait! He's being patient! The firecracker's struck! It's not gonna be enough! No! No! no Virtual gets off again! Once again! Once again! Unbelievable by Team Singularity! Will be able to get the Anuka last second! Twice on Virtual! That's gonna be another score for Nightlight, but at what cost? That you don't really need a scourge either! Now. All the generators essentially have no progress. Virtual oh. being dead is exactly what you needed. Now the survivors are all gonna try and escape, try to go for the reset. Xeno is gonna be working on a generator in the meantime as well too. So Nightlight can't be idle here. He has to find the reset or he has to pressure somebody or he has to go back towards the hook since the save is coming through as well. The survivors are getting greedy here however. Nightlight has the opportunity to snowball on all of them if he's able to land a couple good shots but Nightlight still has to land those. Virtual will take one that's exactly who you need. He's wow. running up the hill, however. You're not gonna be able to hit with the pros unless he drops, and he shouldn't hear. He did, though! He dropped behind the, the, the hill! And because of that, he's gonna be going down! That's so bad for the side of Sin- or, or no, he didn't even hit him! He was waiting on the edge of that hill. We see that so often wow. from comp players, trying to do that to avoid that little fall penalty. But if you hit, sit on that, like I said, Artists' hitbox are huge. They can hit you from places you don't expect. If you sit on that edge, it's going to cost you, and it did right there. The death onto virtual will still somehow come out after the safe on the Yeah, after so much effort has been put in by Singularity to keep virtual alive, but in the end, he will bite the dust, and that's going to be once again the 3v1. In, in the three gen again on this side of the map here there is another fourth generator relatively close but you can't really call it a four gen here because it's just way too far away from that and we also see every single survivor injured so this time i now die on the uh, great perfect a great patience by nightlight here but that's another server going down on a pallet but we do see zero running in the middle of the map so there's not going to be a pallet save Inbound still we don't know exactly where Hardwell is currently located so this survivor might just go for the unlock generator pop which would once again put team singularity at an advantage because virtual is very capable of forking at two generators remaining as the first try on this set demonstrated. Yeah, I, I mean, even if you get another generator done here, it's going to be a very hard ask for your killer. I don't think we'll see a similar game to, to what we saw previously from Singularity. Eternal definitely knows what mistakes they made in that first set, and they were playing really, really good at the start. Again, it was only until the late game where they really fell apart and there was a lot of pressure on them. So. Uh, this, this is gonna be hard for Singularity, I think, if, even if they do get another generator done, which honestly, Nightlight is set up once again on the Artist. This is gonna be very difficult for them to try and make a comeback here in this scenario. Yeah, we are once again looking in a really grim situation for Singularity. Nightlight, despite going for cases so aggressively at the start, not prioritizing the tunnel out, but also being extremely unsuccessful on virtual, that's going to be the penultimate generator pop, but Grenard also dies on the on the on the hook here. So there's not going to be a last second save this time in contrast to how, uh, how fortunate Virtual was in the previous game. See Zeno waiting on the hill. Once again, we see the match on the hill as we saw in the previous game at the very last, at the very end of the game. Also, we see Grenard not dying on hook. The generator will be kicked. No call of Brian at Nightlight's uh, use this time, however. We see our Claudette and Zeno is still waiting inside of the truck. Still has this pallet available. We'll probably go for not go Gonna go for the pre throw. We'll try to play it here. It's gonna go. Last gen gets popped. He's trying to waste, waste as much time as possible, but Hardwell pops the last generator. Yeah, that's so it's huge. Gonna be all done. Yeah, that's such a good position oh. now for Singularity. <laughs> I was saying how it looked weird, and they probably wouldn't get the last two generators done, but somehow they're able to make a comeback. Somehow they're able to get in this scenario. Zeno. Honestly, also, could just go towards the hatch uh, if if Hardwell's able to survive for a little bit longer he, or, you know, go for a lead-up. He's a fresh hook. It's going to be hard, but 
you still have the opportunity to, for even more point swing here. Hardwell gonna be trying to play this edge map. We see him there watching underneath the the, uh, the claw there, trying to see exactly where the artist is gonna be. Calls his bluff, trying to go across all the way, taking it wide, but still, he'll get down here. No opportunity to lose the bounce landing, so Zeno is gonna have some time, but not a lot to try and go on to the edge map, try to go on to the hatch, try to go anywhere and increase the point swing that he, they now have, thanks to completing all the generators. That's the first time mm. in this set that we've seen them complete all the generators. So this yep. is very, very good for Singularity. Eternal, however, has also played this match. They've also had time to talk about their strategy since they've had two games off of playing right now. So they could come back even stronger. They could get someone out the door. Mm. So Zeno really trying to take some points away would be huge here, but oh, still, is. Nightlight is able to find him. No Ed Speed Pog. That's <laughs> definitely now going to be the 4K at zero generators remaining as Nightlord gently lifts Zeno on top of the meat hook. And that is hatch opening, but of course, no survivor will be escaping death for today on this, on this, um, hopefully, potentially, uh, second to last game on the artist. And still, we are still inbound to see singularity on the artist. Once again, going to be V1 most likely, as we are now loading out. And Eternal, with a 4k on zero generators remaining, that is not exactly the result you want, considering the results that we've seen in the previous two games. So V1, all he needs to do now is 4k before the last generator pops. So no, it will not be necessary this time. And V1 without no, it is going to be scary with an extra general regression, regression perk with a score of 28 to 10. That is going to look pretty dominating for Eternal for now, but that's still five generators popped against Artist, which we haven't seen between these two teams just yet. So after a short break, we will see what V1 can do, considering all he needs to do now is 4k before that last generator pops, which he was able to at two generators in the very first game, with only the point deduction being the, the end for Singularity, being the end for Singularity's win in this set as well. But will, will V1 be able to secure the 2-0 is all that we are going to find out after a quick break. Drum roll, please, for the potentially last artist game that we are going to see today after we had a tie in the first run through of uh, set number two. But now we are back at where, almost back at where we began, or back where we could have ended off with, but there was a tie in the previous game, previous set. But now we are at the second game of set number two, attempt two with, once again, V1 on Killer, representing Team Singularity against the survivors of Team Eternal. And, once again, to point out or to emphasize on, uh, Virtual only needs to 4K. I'm saying only because of what follows, it needs to 4K before that last generator pops. And considering Virtual was able to 4K on two generators remaining in the first attempt on his artist game. And now also does not need to bring Noid any longer because no one on team, no one escaped on a Singularity team. So Virtual has to 4K before the last generator pops in order to win. So he won't need Noid and instead has Scorch, uh, has a Pain Resonance, Agitation, once again Merciless Storm. But we're not going to see Sloppy Butcher and we're not going to see Noid from the first game that we saw from V1. So this should be way more threatening now for Team Eternal, Ooh. knowing fully well what V1 is capable of and now having two or having an extra generator regression perk plus Agitation for extra, for extra zoning and for picking out the correct hook. So this is going to be really strong, powerful for Team Singularity. It should be, to say the least, after the 4K2 generators remaining now with an extra gen regression plus their rotation. Yeah, somehow we saw also Dan was to able to take one of those birds virtual. Could have gotten another tag onto him potentially if he did want to go and commit to that. But instead, mm -hmm. Trust kind of meddling around here in the middle of the map, not really committing to anybody at all. This could just be a lot of time wasted if Virtual isn't going to find any value out of this. Trying to hunt down Royalty, he will be able to find him now. But the question mm -hmm. is, he's now in a safer position than he was previously. Is he still going to be able to land one of these crows? He only has one bird left. He's going to be able to get the tag, oh, oh, oh. but he's going to have to wait for the full recharge before 
Royalty is able to be taking another tag. Virtual should just probably play the M1 here since mm. Royalty is going to be able to make one of these pallets. So yeah, that's exactly what he does. He plays the M1, forces it over towards a filler, and now it's the bird mind game. He goes for the 50-50. Royalty will take the down on the oh. pallet. Another generator, or the first generator rather, is going to get done before that hook comes through, however. So Virtual, not in the best spot, especially when he has to contest Dan right here with uh, this pallet, but also another survivor could be nearby, and they are. They go for the pallet save, and it's going to be true. Royalty out of their arms, now going to be running wow. towards the center of the map. Virtual with virtually no pressure right now. <laughs> A turn will be huge comeback. That's zero stages and already one generator popping. That's exactly the opposite of what we saw in the previous game from Virtual. So maybe that Sopi Putra actually did catch Eternal off guard quite tremendously. We're gonna see the both not going to be the live, so Nightlight is going to take the first M1 as well. Still, no hook has been achieved. Four generators still left, but I believe I believe there's another generator flying very soon as Royalty is also immediately reset. Shack Pellet was also still up until this very point. And so far we've seen Shack Pellet drop every single time before a single generator has been popped. So now you use uh, being able to use this way later into the game is going to be so much so much better in uh, for Team Eternal now, having so much more momentum, the Vault will also come through for Nightlight, which is going to waste a couple extra seconds before Virtual is able to pick up the Survivor, and it might just be enough to pop in the generators or two. But uh, we do see the Generator Kick is going to come through. Merciless Storm has not propped them yet. Is going to defend the Generator with the Crow. But still, that's only two Survivors pressured, and no one is dying on the hook away. So that's two Survivors unpressured still working on Generators. In the meantime, so Virtual wasting a lot of time here, trying to apply so much pressure onto Royalty here. It's not, it might not be, it's probably, I, I don't think it's the smartest play in this situation. Royalty will also be able to make it away again, and it's not even going to be injured. Night Knight's still on the ground. No hook pressure whatsoever and it's only going to be an on one on royalty at best yeah another generator also going to be popping virtual like i said before yep. doesn't have really anything to go right now he needs to make this pressure out of thin air nightlight is on the floor but it really doesn't matter you don't have a hook on anybody right now there is no pressure even with somebody down you need a, another injury another down somebody to just be off of them not working on these generators we already have another one as we're hearing right next to us also near completion and this it could be very, very bad for Virtual if he's not able to then get the hook onto Nightlight as well. As we see him get picked up in the corner, there are going to be scratch marks. But if he's not able to get both of these downs, Worlds is also going to be found there, however, though. So he could convert this. Dan is also going to take the Crows. He does get them cleansed thanks to a locker. But Royalty is able to get away as well. So Virtual, while having a great opportunity there, wasn't able to capitalize on it now. But we still see the agitation coming out right now. We could see it down onto Royalty. There's a lot of time wasted, however. If a hit does go through right now, I think Virtual's not going to get this hook. So he is going to, instead of going after wow. Royalty, just commit to that hook. But in the distance, another generator. A third one will pop. Zaka also going to be nearby, trying to go in for the save. Will be found out by Virtual, putting him in a bad situation. But still, it doesn't really matter right now because all of the survivors have what they want, where they want right now, all the pressure where they want. There's nothing that they have to worry about. Having one bad play where Zaka takes an injury far away from the hook doesn't really concern them as the hook will come, the hook save will come through. And now everybody's basically reset back to where they want to be and only one hook has come through from Singularity. But still, all of them are also currently injured and both- Oh my god! <laughs> like you said, all of them are injured! This is exactly what you needed! This is what will turn it around. Everyone's still injured. They have to go for the reset now. Now, if Virtual finds another person, this is what the Severed oh. Hands do. That was thanks to the Severed Hands. They were able to spread that the birds to the other person. Then the second one came in and was able to down oh. them. Oh my god. That is so, so well played from Virtual. Able to land that snipe. And now, the survivors have to go for the reset. If they don't go for the reset, this is going to be over with them. That's exactly what they're doing. Yeah. This is the smart and best play. They have oh. to do this. I think Dan is also going to be 99 here already, trying not to hit towards the killer. But they are going for the reset. So instead, waiting until... They are both going to be instantly healed before actually healing them up. Zaka will go, down will go, exactly what I said. Mm. Now Virtual is going to be on the back of both of them, finds both of them, but now that they're healthy, he still needs to outplay them. He still needs to ensure that neither of these hook saves can come through without one of them taking an injury, or hopefully without with both of them taking an injury. Yeah, once one oh, comes them all, I was going to say how equal strong of a position Eternal are in, but that one send-off, the double down, 
just completely turning this game around. This could have been so, so good for Team Eternal. But we are going to see the double down. If they do manage to get both unhooks, and still, that is only... I no, I don't think that's a single survivor dead on hook still. So, yeah, that's it's still a really good position in for Eternal. So, it's still... They, there's lots that can happen in this upcoming trial. No survivor is dead on hook yet. So all Not of these survivors can again. play rel relatively aggressive. But we do see, yeah, they will be able to repel the birds in this case. So we're not going to see the double down just yet. Nightlight in face once again has a rather strong, has a, a slightly stronger palette than what most of these tiles are nowadays. But still the crow is up and Nightlight will not be able, to, or will be able to make it around. And he's going to have to go down on the palette. The insta pickup occurs. No one's there. We're not going to Hopefully. see the save. No one's there. It's going to be the hook onto Nightlight. The second rather. save now. But everybody in the meantime is healed again. So that no Nightlight is going to be dead on hook. And that is still a three. Uh, that's the three and four virtual. So that's a huge turnaround once again for Singularity. Despite Eternal's incredibly powerful early game. Yeah, that is going to be the death onto Nightlight. Though the question is, is Virtual really going to be able to capitalize off that death that well? He doesn't have a Call of Brian. He's not going to be able to protect this three agent as efficiently, as efficiently as he would have been able to with that Call of Brian. The Merciless Storm will be able to block these generators from being progressed all the way if Virtual uses his his uh, game sense well. But he still has to capitalize on landing his shots, which are going to be difficult when the survivors know exactly what kind of game you're going to, to what game plan you're going for, since you already played this set previously uh, when you tied it earlier. So the survivors know exactly what you're going for, and that's going to really play against Virtual right here when he doesn't have Colorblind to support this 3-gen. And we're already seeing another gen popping. No one's been injured. No one even has crows Ooh, on them. Zaka able to avoid those crows so nicely. Virtual is also going to be playing on the opposite, opposite corner of the map from all the survivors. So this isn't looking that good in the end game, especially when you don't have Noed to back up this. Yeah, but still, all that Virtual needs right now is a single down, and then that would be scored, chains back to back. We see one more generator popping. Virtual still struggling to secure the down onto, onto our Ada here. Zarko finally gonna go down over the vault. That's two survivors still healthy. They should be doubling the last remaining generator. And we do see the ascended. It's going to pop! No miss. Dan, of course, never misses those. We'd I'm pretty sure we haven't seen a single Merciless Storm miss skill check as well. So this should be, if it's just a single person escaping, that's going to be the win for Eternal against all odds on Singularity's pick as well on top of that. So this is going to be huge, a huge setback for Singularity. They get the save too! Situation. And they get the save as well for the swag and the clips. That's got, might even be the three man out here only at five stages. This is definitely the win for Eternal after four very well, strong opens the other door. matches. Yeah, Royalty will open up the other door. Zaka still going to go down at the fun bus. Wonderfully placed uh, bird shot from yeah, Virtual there. Matter. Only if we saw that earlier in the match, though, would that have mattered? <laughs> now that Royalty is out the door, Dan's on his way as well. That's it. Yeah, Singularity wow. played out of their mind in the first round on the Artist. Played really well on the second round. The minus two preventing them from getting the win, forcing the reset, yeah, and yeah. now Eternal got warmed up. They knew what was going to happen, Precisely. and they made things clear on this Artist set. <laughs> if it wasn't for the wrong map, this would have already been over two games ago, and I didn't sign up to cast the best of five, I bet cast the best of seven, but here we are. It could not be more exciting between these two teams, Singularity and Eternal. We thought there was so much momentum on the side for Team Singularity, with so much pressure in the previous three artist games, but then Eternal playing out of their mind on the Survivor game, and that is now finally going to be the win with a score of 27 to 43 for eternal after four well fought out games on the artist but that's only set number two done and the t score is once again tied one to one as we are soon going over to t to the plague set yeah this plague set is going to be very very important not only for a singularity who are coming off of a loss but also for eternal because if we look on to the future games that are going to happen after this a lot of them are going to be a little bit singularity sided you know we have the nurse we have a doctor for that tiebreaker yeah. if it goes all the way both of those are going to be uh firstly very advantageous for singularity because not only it's their pick but also because you know we have insane insane nurse players on the side of singularity and then on the <laughs> doctor side it's going to be survivor sided once again and we've seen in the cinnabite set how well their survivors really can play 
against these off meta against these m1 killers yeah so doctor being a pick for them is going to be very very singularity sided so if you're eternal you want to take this momentum that you won from the artist set into this plague set and you want to ensure a victory on both of these wow. going forward and make sure you can take this as soon as possible because if you let it slip singularity is going to be at your throat and they're going to take this but we'll see what happens who's able to take the advantage and and who is going to go into the grand finals uncontested without dropping a single mm -hmm. game here after a very very short break To everybody who's grown sick and tired of the green color palette of the Wreckers Yard, we are finally advancing to set number three with the plague between Singularity and Eternal. Eternal against all odds being able to tie the score on Singularity's pick with a one-to-one. -one. So, so far we've seen both teams lose on their own set, which is going to put the score to one-to-one. -to -one. And I will not have Good Day casting with me any longer and I can instead introduce to you everybody, but you're of course very well known to his voice. Welcome on the casting booth, Direwolf. Thank you so much, Mathis. And you're right, the blue color pattern of the Macmillan <laughs> always gives you a very great feeling. And we have the Plague basically on her home map in Competitive Dead by Daylight here for the third set. It's a 1-1 one, one so far, and we do see the interesting strategy coming back from 2017, hiding out corrupt intervention. If this strategy works, it's so powerful, but it is linked to a lot of risk. So I feel like Zack is realizing slowly that uh, catching the first survivor here takes him a little bit too long and might anticipate these survivors to hide and the basement is a very interesting choice as well they are gambling a little bit hartwell has left his mm. position is not seen i believe by zaka but left a few scratch marks here behind the main building so zaka now definitely aware that someone is around here but the chase is going on in corrupt intervention so still potentially a very great start for singularity here yeah, and Zarka also very smartly infecting that pallet early on because these pa that pallet is usually forced down by the killer relatively early on to get some extra distance. And Hardwell, in this case, will be infected by it as well. So very smart play by Zarka early on. But already having committed to a chase on main building means that all of these three other survivors should have had plenty of time to make it all the way across the map and should already be on this side of the map here. But Zarka also has two pools available here. Thanks to the blessed, uh, blessed Apple, we'll have two pools of corruption right around this three gen on the shack side of the map here. But I do think considering there's three generators here, there might be a four gen on the other side of the map. You're still waiting for Zarka to turn around. Please, please, please. There we go. We are going to see the four gen on main building as well. So yeah, we see the double vault here. Zarka trying to outplay shack pallet at uh, the drop shack it as that will be dropped early on. We see Arima trying to avoid the infection as for as long as possible because Zarka is of course instantly going to leave that survivor because that infection is just going to put that survivor into the injured status effect over time. Still Zarka trying to hard so hardest to finally hit the infection and we are going to see the animation by Arima but it's not going to infect. That is so unfortunate for Zarka. The pallet will also be infected but Arima has so much distance to make it all the way around and postponing this infection for so so long with a perfect hold as well yeah this is insane the first chase going on for so long from hartwell over to arima now making a little mistake here but that's maximum going to be the infection here you shouldn't find shelter in time it's going to happen here with the m1 applied as well so we have two survivors injured at this point two of them are fully healthy still not even infected so not a lot of pressure onto the team and that's a very great pallet stun by arima as well taking more distance and more time away from zaka here now trying to mind game but so far it doesn't work work onto the survivors of singularity they are confident they are strong and that's going to be a punishment of potentially three so uh, three generators coming out very very soon here arima still in a difficult spot pulling an absolute amazing play now he's going to down eventually but that's three generators in the, at the same time being popped here by Singularity. Three generators for one hook stage is telling us how much is on the table here in this winner final. Eternal will have to find a way to come back. You have a no way out, not a know it here. That's your strategy, but that means you really want to find a few more fresh hooks.
I do have to say I love the strategy that Synergy went with here. So essentially they had three survivors stealthing at the start and one survivor taking chase in the middle of the map where the pallets are so dense and the, and the tiles are absolutely galore. So that's awesome to see that there was three man splitting on this main building site, popping three generators at the exact same time and not a single survivor going down in the meantime until the down was finally achieved on Tarima. So that's going to leave Zarka at only one stage remaining as strategy. I have so far not seen whatsoever in the slightest just aggressively playing the middle just really taking this uh, taking advantage as best as possible on this map Zaka once again going to be unsuccessful on the M1 wasting so much time in all of these chases but there's still a 3 gen left on track that Zaka could potentially play around but it's not going to be worth anything at all with no hooks gained yeah, no hooks game, that's the big thing here, right? You have a lot of pressure. Basically, you needed a few more downs five minutes ago. This one was a very great one and should reward Zaka with some confidence back here when fighting against the odds at this point because only two more generators. But Singularity had quite some time here on the generators already, so the pressure is going to be quite high. 75% onto this one, already setting up for the unhook as well, so not wasting any time on the survivor side. There. Singularity now trying to dodge this one, it's going to work. Saka trying to go for it, and it's going to land onto Hartwell with the second try here. What a great puke over the hill, and that's what you need right now. Quick downs back to back, forcing the survivors into a routine of unhooking and resetting, and also getting a few hook stages next to the generators you're trying to protect. So Saka pulling back, and we have seen that before. We've seen Nightlight on the artist set, so Eternal writing a story today over and over where the killer is in a difficult spot coming back. Maybe Zaka is taking Nightlight as an inspiration here and trying to achieve the same. It's going to be a puke onto this generator here as well, oi, but Zaka needs to be careful. You need to notice any survivor that's moving in here. We have three stacks of No Way Out at this point, so <laughs> it's going to be a little bit of extra time in the end game, taking the power here as well to make sure mm -hmm. that the survivors do not have an easy time, but still going for the unhook now, working around this pallet here, and it's going to work out Zaka not finding the puke onto the survivor just yet it's coming out onto virtual eventually that's going to be the next hook stage but we're still talking about four hooks in exchange for four generators and and still this is now in a really difficult position because we are seeing the generators here that i was also already laughing about in the background so we see one three generators right next to each other so this is looking really good well like talk at one generator remaining and this is also the point where i really like to talk or analyze the hook placements that zaka is going for because now with the hill hook he's closer to these three generators that he can protect whereas the hook that zaka went for with when hardware went down in the corner is stronger for when you're trying to down the person trying to one go for the one for one or for the or two man save in general there are no uh, there are absolutely no uh, tiles nearby so against plague that is extremely dangerous against the plague so but now with the hillock the generator control will be oh so much stronger zaka still has a little bit of ability left will be able to get it on the, on the harbor most likely the insult comes through and the double tap is <laughs> It's gonna be another down and it's also once again going to be in the corner unless Zaka does go for the hillock and he will perfectly unlock in time now. So I, I thought if Team Singularity had waited on the hook there that could have been the drop in front of the or could have been the uh, slug in the corner with that survivor still on the hook. So but still with this three gen Zaka really lucky to still have this after that incredible three generator pop at the start. Singularity coming in with a very unique strategy but they did in the end three gen themselves entirely on one side of the map here with a very fortunate hill hook for Zarka. And this is the great thing, right? Because as you pointed out, Singularity is coming in with insane strategies and they are coming in with a unique playstyle and Eternal is basically seeing it the first time here in DBD League and still able to adjust. The killers are put in a difficult spot, but they are not giving up. They are fighting back. They are finding the pressure with something like a hill hook, something crazy like uh, taking the control. And even though Xeno is going into mode of edge map, Andy, it's going to be a down that just adds a few more seconds 
seconds onto the clock of Zaka here. We do see the notification mm -hmm. from Call of Brian that the generator over there has been worked on, but I don't think that's going to be the completion just yet. We also have the four uh, stacks onto the No Way Out at this point. So yeah. if you are going to be pushed into the end game, you still oh. don't need to worry too much. Oh. And that's a little bit of a greeting from Singularity towards <laughs> Zaka there, but, uh, but that's not going to drop the control significantly. We do see that Virtual is staying around though behind the hill, wants to work maybe kind of like a bait because you don't have the biggest uh, distance here and that's going to be a lot of risk for the survivor. But Zaka realizes the bait is going to check on the hill again, expecting mm. that one survivor would rotate in. And there we have just seen all three survivors, Zeno, Virtual and Arima on the right side. So they are lurking there in the mid part, trying to figure out when's the best case or the best point to move into Zaka's back. And that seems to be the case now, but this chase is not going to be for up for much longer because Virtual will not be able to reach this pallet. Good news, you made it out of the area from the bottom side. You're no longer in the area where the generators are protected by the killer, but you haven't won the biggest amount of time either. The singularity finding themselves in quite the pickle. You caught no, caught no in the end. Not going to be. We are going to see the double of the generator. I was going to comment on how Call of Brian should have nullified all of a progress spot. Singularity immediately going for the double on that last remaining generator and will be able to pop it. Zaka going to give up on holding that un unpoppable free gen, most likely because it does get a bit boring. But still, it's a tournament, so you should really be considering committing to everything you have. So Zaka hopefully. Hoping that if he doesn't commit it to the pace there at the end would have been enough or the down would have been enough and Call of Brain would have done enough damage here. So if I'm dodging three pukes in a row, never mind, Zeno somehow getting injured on the pallet there. Zaka still trying to find Zeno out of position, but the down is not going to come through. It is finally going to come through. One survivor still on the look virtual, close to dying on it. So uh, survivor should come in now, but Zaka uh -oh. still has so much ability left. So this could potentially be a fast down, but we do see sprint burst from virtual plus the endurance status effect is not going to be, be the down on this survival here. Rima finding absolute hardest on the pallet stun, but it's not going to be enough. Zaka more patient than our survivor. And still, there's a lot that can happen right now. And with the pickup in there the background... There is so well. much going on on the table here. We do... Ooh. <laughs> Bit of lag here on the castle group. Anyway, so we still see a Rima. It is the one in chase here, not being down by Zaka's ability on the pallet. Extremely well played. Now the hit then comes through as well, but Blake has the ability to go for the two tap. Hardware will be able to take the few, but it's not going to be the injure. <laughs> and yeah, Arima and Hardwell are the two survivors still standing on the gate, but uh, on the gate, on the main building. But we see the timer on at the top of the screen slowly ticking down. Our survivors now must heal and then build a wall for uh, Arima to safely pass by. So they might all go for the cure on the opposite side of the map to then attempt to safely escort our survivor out of the gate. But Zaka already at seven stages. So that's going to be pretty huge for him so far. And another kill would definitely be necessary in this situation. No Way Out has already fully ran out. So there's no perks that will help. But we are going to see our survivors will come in for the help. Oh, that's going to be not the hit here. And just saying it wouldn't be me casting if a wow. mountain internet wouldn't strike at least one time during the stream that we're having him for the opener instantly. Hello, I'm back and we're watching this insane end game right here. Arima with the injury, three survivors healthy and they are all coming in potentially to help out. But we have such a long power still for Zarka's Blake here. So a lot of danger being applied onto Singularity as well. We do see that one survivor is already sneaking in on the right side, pulling back, however. So the team trying to set up the best possible strategy here. Zarka checking left and right, making sure that nobody is moving into the back of the main building, trying to get the survivor out. Harpo decides to leave oh, and oh. Arima and Virtual oh, are now moving out. away. They oh, are already out. Out. There's the that as well. Zaka has been fooled here a little bit He's on the main here. building. They have left oh, and there's no. only this one survivor. And the realization and right on the oh, other no. side. Zeno is still up there. So this is a four-man escape for Team Singularity. So unfortunate for wow. Zaka in the endgame at this. Still being able to get seven stages, that's 
trying to mod here, but Zaka had that very gem that he could have played around more defensively, and it could have ended differently. Really gambling for the down on the one on the main side, taking that chase oh so far, while the other the two survivors were doubling on the generator. Meanwhile, we had Xeno, I believe, already ready on the exit gate here, instantly proccing the no way out, despite four stacks, and it's not going to be a single kill after a flawless stealth play on main building here, somehow making it past water control Zarka on main building here, and somehow that is going to be the four men out without Zarka even realizing until the icons on the HUD popped up. So that is a huge result now for Team Singularity with a four-man escape despite seven stages, but Plague is a killer that has the ability to 4k very, very well. So we will see Team Singularity's response on the killer side and Eternal on the survivor side right after a very short break. Welcome back, everybody. Suffocation Pit the second with Zeno facing Zaka, Dan, Nightlight and Royalty with a little bit of a lead for Team Eternal here, but it's still going to be a difficult one after we've just seen an yep. insane four-man escape from Singularity after tricking Zaka on the main building, making him <laughs> believe that the survivors are actually stuck up there and then just sneaking around the entire map and getting the escapes eventually. So we are going to have a look how Eternal and Singularity are playing this out in this one, Dan royalty nightlight and zaka you're spreading across the generators it seems like doesn't look like they are going for the hiding out corrupt intervention strategy we also see a thanatophobia being brought this time into um, the trial and interesting uh add-ons coming in here as well because <laughs> that's going to be the longer infection time onto yep. the generators here and that by a lot correct me if i'm wrong mathis but i think that's 50 seconds added yep plus 20 and plus 30 from the yellow and the brown the limestone seal in combination with the hematoid seal so very i i can't even put it in words i'm 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 at a loss of words here an extremely unique pick from xeno plus 50 percent infection on the on, on on everything he pukes on plus thanatophobia a perk we have not seen picked in a long long while and i don't think a single time in winter circle even so far but mm -hmm. with that longer infection time it might just uh, convince our survivors into or the survivors of team eternal into just be working on the generators not wanting to wait out and that is going to tra entrap them into thanatophobia it would be really huge if all survivors started doing that at the exact same time not knowing that there's going to be a thanatophobia and then that would all of a sudden be a plus 20 percent or minus 20 percent on the slice and that somehow also didn't infect our survivor uh, and also just to put it into perspective he's not using the uh what's it called i believe the oh yeah the prayer tablet fragment that's what it's called where you cannot puke on survivors or it only works on objects he's not using that he's simply using double duration on objects and we're also going to see dan with perfect cutting on the oh perfect cutting on the corner i was going to say but then unfortunately running straight into xeno <laughs> gonna mess up the fast forward here it's just going to be the medium hole and that is going to be the infection onto dan first survivor has been successfully infected Xeno with a very interesting pick here because this might just lock down three gens entirely as survivors always try to avoid touching infected objects. The survivor there calling Dan the man has the responsibility here for Team Eternal to go on a long run. So far, he is doing a good job. Yeah, Bamboozle coming in. Thanks for pointing that out. I was not expecting that here in this one, but it is true. But Dan now fully infected. Xeno is taking it so far because you need to check on this top side with three generators here even a fourth one there on the right side of the midsection so could be chained together to a very nice four gen setup so definitely something you can work with here and so great decision making by Zeno to go a little bit careful onto the first chase and pull back keeping an eye onto the generators now back towards the midsection but where is eternal no survivor up there on the generators at least not to be seen and no one in the midsection either they have all vanished after 
going for quite a powerful start here and getting some percentages into these objectives. We do see a few percentages here and there on the generators, but they are playing this really smart and they are playing this with a really, really individual approach. I really like what uh, Eternal is showing us so far. Zeno now scorching a little bit more to the outside of the map, expecting that the survivors are hiding there, but that's not going to happen either. Nowhere to be found. Zaka hiding up here. Nightlight is hiding behind the rock and royalty chilling in the corner. So after a little bit of progress and seeing the first survivor has been injured they are all pulling back though interesting strategy to say the least i'm excited to see what eternal is planning next yeah i don't think anyone has ever really even seen the strategy team eternal have to be really flexible what i would suggest in this situation knowing now that xeno is in fact using thanatophobia but also because of these two add-ons that, that those are very difficult to call out, however. So I don't think Eternal will even be able to do that early on. So, but in that case, Zeno is not going to have the, as many uh, corrupt purges as he could because there's only one, I believe, that spawns at the start. Yeah, exactly. And the Blessed Apple would give an extra one. And in this case, all I would can think of is that Nightlight, our only survivor that is not infected yet, should just basically do gens on the exact opposite side of the map away from team uh, 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 away from Zeno as far as possible so that the minus 20 will not be applied a great fake here also by Zarka will barely avoid it and then all of these other three survivors that will be infected and injured should be working uh, should be three splitting on the generators here one survivor on the generator will night basically just sits in the corner countering thanatophobia that, that way because at this point Zeno is truly an M1 killer with no ability because he only has that one perk available to pick up that he that is also so far away so team Team Eternal need to play this extremely slowly and, and most likely just uh, counter that Thanatophobia as much as possible. So if Eternal are, flex are flexible enough to counter this exact predicament, which I believe they are, then Xeno might have an extremely unfortunate game here. Yeah, so far it does look like great idea from the killer, but the survivors being well aware of it oh. and not making a mistake. Talking about mistakes, Royalty unfortunately vaulting back into Zeno, and this might switch a little bit what we just talked about here, because Eternal Jeff definitely had the pressure, they had the chance to keep Nightlight away, but now with this down unexpected quickly, this is going to be a little bit more pressure towards Zeno here, but Eternal still in a good spot. One hook stage mm -hmm. in exchange for two generators, being well aware of the add ons um, Zeno is bringing here. So, Nightlight, I believe we will not see him until the end game if everything is going according to the plan. Next chase starting here on this relatively oh. safe one. And Zeno once again oh. swinging, trying to get a little bit too much here from the survivors. That's oh. the third one that's not going to find its target. The same, the safe in the meanwhile as well in the back of Zeno. There's going to be the hit taking by Nightlight. Now he's going to be infected and injured, but that was a great trade of you to take Minus it 20. and go for it. That's going to be now the survivors all leaving out here out of this area from the bottom side. One survivor is standing here with one pallet left, but it's looking oh. good. Oh, the pool of corruption is going to be used to potentially one time. Oh. You have it! What a oh, great what? one here by Zeno. It actually ah. hits with the last <laughs> drop of the puke onto Dan here. That's going to be hook stage number two coming in on the bottom side of the mid section here as well we do see the resets being taken by zaka now so you want to fight against the thanatophobia as well so zaka now the one that needs to pull back stay a little bit hidden go on the generators here the royalty going as well so they are turning this top side into a pool of corruption for Z uh, for Zeno, but it also has a lot of time waste to go all the way up there because you're trying to protect the generators down mm, here perfect. so eternal forcing a great split between oh, fortunately vaulting into the killer once again here and it's also really interesting to see there are, there are two pools or one pool of corruption in either corner and there's also a hill in either corner so it, it would take Zeno quite a while to pick up oh. this puke in the corner and we are going to see flash attempt the first oh, save and the third save, the save comes through that's going to be the down or the, the, the dropping down of Zarka once again. There's no survivor down yet. This is exactly what Team Eternal need. We see the double board with Bandrizel, but the pallet is still down. Our survivors most likely is going to skip the tile. No, it's gonna fake the pallet perfectly. Royalty once again will be scot free and will be able to run to main building. Eternal somehow turning this around because that is exactly the situation that Zeno had to have been in, where the survivors start curing and giving him the pools, but there could not be in a more perfect for Team Eternal truly with one hook on either hill in either corner that is absolutely huge for Team Eternal and also looks uh, very aesthetically pleasing.
<laughs> it does look really, really pleasing, and they're doing such a good job here so far. It is really great. When Eternal starts shining, it is such a dynamic in the team that it's just unstoppable, and this is exactly what we see right here. This dropping down of this survivor due to the pallet save costs it so much here, and it's going to turn the entire game. We are 90 seconds since the save happened, and there's no down since then. Singularity running after the stage is trying to achieve the points, but so far, Royalty is doing an insane job right here, reaching the pallet as well. So absolutely shining here, going for the another turn around this loop. You're wasting as much time as possible. The fake doesn't work. However, Zeno just confidently going for the down here. Royalty is hook stage number three. We are talking about seven stages as the win condition from the previous trial. So there's still a lot of work to do for Zeno. We do see a lot of percentages already in the last generator down here. We have another generator next to it. But look at this setup, Mathis. There's one in line. So we do have a three gen bottom. They were not able to successfully pull it to the top set. But we already have 90 percent down here so they are aware of the three gen setup they are close to it and now it's all coming down to the question how good is Zeno with defending this final gen and i also have to point out this is exactly where oh perfect checks for holding this is also exactly where this combination of perks is going to bloody shine. We see Thanatophobia and Call of Brine, so all of these survivors will be 20% slower. And every time Zeno decides to go for the gen, then it's going to be Call of Brine. But once again, the killer will not be able to defend the three gen. And the last predator pops with so, so much fear. So, so, so fear. <laughs> okay. Uh, Zarka got absolutely destroyed on that window. But still, we need seven stages from Zeno if he wants to take the set. So one kill will not suffice for our killer from Team Singularity. So Eternal might just be able to win their own pick now against the odds after Zarka has been successfully four-outed in the previous game and the exit game is open to it as well. So if there's a three-man escape, Insane. that's the win for Eternal. Insane well, story well, on the well. suffocation that yeah, just just so insane how Eternal is able to fight against something that is so unknown and unusual and competitive that by daylight when we loaded into this and we saw the add-ons we were a little bit worried about the generator control that is potentially coming out from Xeno about not having access to the objectives but they are actually pulling it here with a 34 to 30 four point lead for Team Eternal great performance here in the third set and now they've turned it around it's a two one wow. for wow. Team Eternal. So Singularity now under pressure. Now, Mathis, we have to talk about killer number four here, the nurse. Yes. I will say I was a little bit surprised that Singularity picked the nurse because we have a Zaka, we have a Nightlight, we have a Royalty mm -hmm. with experience as a survivor. They have a Dan. So, <laughs> yes, Singularity has a ton of good nurses and good survivors too. But what do you think about this pick here now looking at the 2 1 pressure? Well, Singularity must be quite confident on the nurse with the previous performances we've seen Xeno numerous times and also that record-breaking 4K on four generators remaining against Sequence that must boost or every player, every Singularity's player's confidence here, knowing that they can stomp in these extremely uh, experienced teams of the likes of Sequence also, who are easily among the top three currently in Comp Dead by Daylight. So getting a result like that against a team like that as well, they might just as well transfer that over to Eternal. But we are going to see in the upcoming set with, I believe, also Xeno first on the Nurse on the Cold Tower, mm -hmm. the most classic of all competitive maps. So after a super short break, we will be back with set number four and already potentially the end of the, the final set between these two teams because Eternal only needs one more to win. So after a short break, so everybody stay tuned. Hello, hello everybody and welcome back to a very familiar face on the right here we see the also dreaded nurse on the call tower very soon xeno representing team singularity in the first match of set four but it's technically set five due to the tie on the outer set against the survivors of team eternal we see zarka dan sir pickle and royalty sir pickle now coming in fresh 
for this very nurse set nightlight going to chill on the bench most likely prepping for the up for his upcoming nurse set so we'll need all the practice possible and we should be in very very soon there we go transition comes in royalty already hiding in a locker we see renewal already being acquired very early on by dan our uh, our ace player xeno messing up the blink in main building is going to cost him a little bit of time at the start of the game as we see all our survivors hiding edge map xeno already checking behind main building trying to find the survivor stealthing dan already made it cross across the map past Zeno, and will be able to be the first one or working on the generator and also very thick the first one not the first one for being chased Zeno splints straight back over into the metal and also with a very interesting perk build we're going to see pop goes the weasel and agitation and Thrilling Tremors too, so Thrilling Tremors especially, a perk that I have so far not seen a single time used by the girls, or I don't even think in comp in general. Zeno with a very aggressive bling straight back onto Dan, but will be able to zone him a tiny little bit, but Dan will be able to postpone that hit also slightly, and oh, only if he had the launch level now that would have probably focused him in the very end here, but Dan will be able to avoid that first hit. Two snipers will be found in the open over. Zaka will be able to juke Zeno out around the tree. Oh, no, I, I'm so used to Zaka being on Nancy, but it's a uh, pickle will be able to juke, juke on uh, the tree in the middle here. And we will see the first hit is finally going to occur onto Sir Pickle after the very successful juke in the middle. But a fake run into Shaq. Zeno is going to blink straight behind, but we see a double double back by Sir Pickle. Beautifully played. We'll be able to drop Shaq Pellet. Zeno should be getting an audio identity. No, the perfect use of the firecracker is going to silence Sir Pickle's grunts of pain from his injured Nancy. So that is already huge chases coming in right from the get go. Still trying to find Sir Pickle, but he's played so much distance. This is amazing. Amazingly played so far by Team Eternal against uh, Zeno's nurse. And now we still see Zeno trying to find another Sliver in the middle. So Pickle Chase will be abandoned. We will see Dan oh, nice. is going to take the first tag in the middle. Now this is a very important tag on to Dan, but you're switching over once again onto Royalty here. Not catching him, though that would have been a great chain of three injuries back to back, but Zeno now pulled a little bit towards the bottom side here, has to check on this generator as well. Dan already with the reset, so Eternal doing a great work onto resetting these injuries here, denying any progress. Zeno is doing and putting up pressure onto them, and we do see a little bit of mind gaming around the rock here. Edgeman, Andy in the corner is going to also last a few more seconds back and forth wow. in the corner of the map what a great play by pickle oh, yeah, awesome. another five seconds being added onto the chase timer here really really good work by him and now we do see the first stage coming in but math is usually the first generator is already completed at this point we do see exactly that but there is a second and a third one potentially on the way because this was quite a long chase for an opener on the cold tower. Yeah, and that top goes the weasel as well as the throwing tremors are going to shine now. Xeno does definitely not have the best generator splits here. He does still have two generators remaining on the bottom on the shack side of the map here. There are four generators around around the main building as per usual, but that one generator in the corner is not super close as a, as not as close as it could be. So Zeno shouldn't really have the ability to control the fourth and he only has the three gen to work with at ma around main building. Also, it's very odd to see him that we're going to see the sloppy, ba basically the sloppy butcher add on in combination with an aura reading for heals when survivors are hit. So we're not going to be using any of the other add-ons that Nurse has in a repertoire. For example, the one that I've already pointed out at the beginning, the longer, uh, the, the longer lunge add-on exactly. And still, Zeno really struggling to find a second down here after these impeccable chases at the start. Dan will be able to make it or oh, get stuck on the on the on the corner here, but Zeno will be able to connect the hit with a second blink. So Pickle instantly healed once again. Zeno got a full release that blink, but a beautiful use of the flashlight here, stunning the nurse mid blink so if, if you use that flashlight before the nurse lands oh, no i was gonna say is that the second firecracker i thought i saw the animation begin there but sir pickle once again gonna be able to make so much distance from the corner however this survivor is second hook now and dead art had available as well but is not going to hit sir pickle will be the second stage of the game and Zeno might potentially tunnel out a survivor 
faster than what Eternal would like to see. Yeah, the tunnel out would now actually be really important for Zeno because oh. still, as you mentioned, I'm really surprised how long it takes to go for the second down here. Royalty has just cleansed this oh. totem, sprint bursting away though, getting out of this area, but that's going to be a quick chance for a chase. But Zeno not taking it, chilling around the hook, taking a look onto the incoming survivors first, making sure that there's no quick and safe unhook oh. happening. Now going towards the top side, there's one generator in the main building, one on the right and left, the typical three gen setup on the whole tower, but we do see a great progress onto the main generator already, so even more important to get that pop goes the weasel kick in, but just when Zeno is returning, they are on the way on the save, on to Sir Pickle here, keep in mind, Nancy has the dead heart available, so that's going to be one tool available royalty is going around the corner and that's going to be Sir Pickle, not going for the DH, is going down is yes. there going to be a decisive strike, that's going to be the question here, for this survivor and Sir Pickle does yes. have it, that's going to be a longer one and that's a huge turnaround now that could actually be still coming in place because he kept it second blink by Zeno oh, no, guess what? that's going to be plus five stone here minecraft <laughs> Minecrafting Zeno not going to go for the down. That's going to be Sir Pickle still on his feet, still running. Oh, no scratch my. marks available, but he spots him around this window here. Is it going to be the down? It's not going to be. DH is going to be used. Wasn't even needed there, I believe, but still going for the safety. Now back towards the shack. We are on edge of the next down, but so much time expiring here. Yeah, on to this down. That's to be the oh, one so picking up. How long of a run and recovery was that? That wow. might be end game very soon wow. here. That could be at least two generators popping, but Royalty's gen is still only at 50% remaining. What does what has Zarka been doing in the meantime? Waiting in the corner. This could have been two generators popping. So we already see that there's a perfect gen split for Team Eternal against Singularity's nurse with a two to two. They're trying to do their best to double pop this generator now in time. But we are gonna see maybe they 99 that last generator as well, and we're gonna see an adrenaline play. I don't understand exactly what Zarka has been doing in the corner. I mean health as well but we, they are going to be able to do this generator in time then the man once again the in his classic face against Zeno gonna be able to avoid the blink once again still has that flashlight available still has the pallet can pallet as well as well He's gonna try to go for the stun it's not gonna be enough forever Dan will go down on the pallet and Zeno slugging the sniper instantly blinking and we do see the last generator pop I think this is only going to be six stages for Zeno an incredible result for Team Eternal this is absolutely crazy what Eternal is putting up here. You can see the pressure onto Zeno's shoulders going for the slug here in the endgame without any endgame perk available. And there are the lights on the door. And that is very likely going to be enough here. Oh, he's being pulled. Last second, you're not going in. So now Zaka actually has to turn 180 and go. Everything is turning from a 2K. Stages into a 4K! Zeno missing the front! But Zeno to block the top switch! What is Zaka is going to get the pallet down! That's going to be the injury! It's going to make it out! Zeno is going to make it out! Yes! That's going to be one survivor out of the top here! But still, so many stages added here from 6 to 9 stages! Madness! That's a 10 point swing by a mistake of Eternal in the end game, and we also have to worry about the hatch! Wow, Zeno beautifully blinking straight past Zarka there, escaping, trying to body block the gate and will be successful, but then also being stuck in a stalemate. It might be the wiggle out and a stalemate deliverance as well. Sprint burst deliverance is just gonna run back to the extricate and then can Kobe into the escape because of the base skin endurance damage effect. We'll have so much distance here, but Z I do think Zeno will be able to. I think Zeno will still be able to catch up in time, but we see the crawl out as well in the meantime in the corner. There's so much available is Zeno has to go far for the deliverance hook but it's gonna be so difficult for royalty here because I don't think he will be able to escape basement but he's gonna wiggle out the stage and be able to go is it wiggle oh it's like oh, oh, my throat help oh this is so insane what we're seeing here from Team Eternal. Now we do see Royalty on the hook, Dan still on the ground. And that's going oh. to be Dan just going for the corner here. They are actually still able to pull something maybe. Dan still a fresh hook as well. So you can play with the bleed out. You can play yeah. for a last second. Daisy, because there is a deliverance in play. Maybe a deli Good into bounce. the pickup. There's so many options still. The game is not over. Anything can oh, happen no, these last seconds of the try. Royalty is actually waiting. Maybe 
baiting Zeno a little bit into safety, but then is going to be located by Zeno. He made it going to be now. Oh. Now Zeno is actually going oh, to play back, but if it's going to be the pickup, then Royalty can go for the deliverance. That's going to happen now. Royalty with the deliverance, but the nurse right in front of it. Is he maybe going for the shack as well? But then would need to wait at least 60 seconds there. The scratch mark. Where's Royalty? That's going to be the question. Working around here, staying at the palace. Royalty going for yeah. the patience game, and that's going to be the down. DS has already been used, so that's going to be, and it's already also end game. But wow, Mathis, I think we need to call the ambulance for the casters here. <laughs> that was unbelievable. A roller coaster of emotion. Could not even really tell what was going on in the end game there. Royalty going for that deal. Royalty with that deliverance play, but Zeno playing it really smartly, just letting him wiggle out, knowing fully well that as the Mercy can is going straight back on him, he will be able to hook him further and further every time. But now both of these survivors are inevitably going to die on hook. What could have been a two man fresh escape is now going to be nine stages for Zeno. So Nightlight has to try his absolute hardest in the upcoming game in order to rival this result. Thanks to Sir Pickle's chase, also practically being able to run Zeno for, I believe, the first four generators even. So a phenomenal chase by our Nancy, replacing Zarka or not, with, with, uh, taking over Zarka's character. And we are most likely going to see Nightlight or Sir, Pic or Sir Pickle in the upcoming game as well. The survivor that has been able to chase for so unbelievably long, Zeno will now be able to celebrate his nine stages that he barely clutched out in the end game. And yeah, that's going to wrap it up for the first game here with a huge turnaround. Once again, to reiterate that with the attempted deliverance play, but still unfortunately did not have enough distance to, or did not ha was not close enough to the exit gate. Because also if Royalty had gotten that gate open and not grabbed, that was definitely the two man escape with Zaka running out, Scott's free, and then Royalty still having a having the deliverance and Za uh, Dan also most likely in position on that hatch in time. So... A huge game here, and I can't wait to see what's going to happen in the upcoming game with this nurse game already being so excited. So after a short break, we will be right back. Is this the final trial in this best of five eternal with 13 points? And that's going to be Singularity with 21. We had a fresh hook, and that's what Hartwell, Arima, We won and Zeno need to achieve as well to at least tie up and run it back on the call tower, which I believe in this situation wouldn't even be the worst opportunity for you because usually getting two survivors out of the door is quite difficult especially when you are facing the one and only nightlight <laughs> himself on the nurse there i'm hyped to see the perks nightlight is going to yeah. bring here because i would assume we'll see something end game related in case something is not going according to plan the survivors are about to leave maybe no one escapes death maybe no way out mm -hmm. something like that in the back pocket would not make me too surprised here but we also know that Zeno, we want to remain hardcore Great survivor squad with a lot of experience against the nurse. And we are looking at it. Nightlight actually with a lot of confidence here, not taking any perk that's related to the end game. Mathis, what's your opinion on that? Well, obviously, there's not going to be no it because Nurse's M1s are now special attacks out of the blink, but so, but No Way Out could have definitely been a play. And instead, we're going to see mm -hmm. Call of Brian, so Nightlight will try to hold a 3 down. And I do think we have a 4 then here on the Shack side of the map for, for change. So there's probably going to be 3 generators around main and 4 generators that he can play around here. And usually, survivors take chases to Shack here, and Arima will also instantly be caught. Nightlight like, perfectly holding the corner. We'll be able to get the first down in the corner. Oh. And that's gonna be the down onto Arima right away from the start of the game. And still, that's four generators here that he can now defend. So, you, as I said, usually Slivers always instinctively run to uh, run to Shaq and hoping that there's, uh, you are usually expecting that there's not going to be many gens there because usually the four gens, five gens, etc. spawn around main. But Nightlight with a perfect logs gen will be able to hold all of this side of the map here. You already see Hardwell crawl, uh, uh, creeping in for the early save of Nightlight. Immediately spots them and will be destroyed on wow. the pallet by, I believe, a reverse or something. Can't even tell. But that's yeah. going to give perfect distance to Zeno to be able to get the pickup. Firecracker will be attempted, but it's not going to be enough 
off. Right now, will instantly be able to turn out Arima with a very peaky double back. But Arima once again going to double double back straight back into the right now, expecting our to be more cocky. And the blink perfectly wow. dis perfectly planned, held through the pallet will be the second stage right after on Tarima with no DS as well and Nightlight will now be able to claim the hook right in the generator area that they were working on with Pop, Ghost, Weezy and with Call of Groin. Thanks for agitation. And, and Virtual being around as well so the next chase could potentially start but Nightlight actually mm -hmm. teleporting just back. I like that decision making, making sure that nobody's going for an instant pull here and you can really tell Nightlight is not here for joking around. He really wants to take this third set for Team Eternal, not pushing it towards the Doctor set. He's saying this is where it all comes to an end. Eternal is going to move into the Grand Final on the upcoming weekend. Singularity would need to play a sequence here, and that seems to be what Nightlight is trying to achieve. And uh, we do see one generator as a punishment, but the, end, uh, the early game looking way worse than on the side of Eternal in the previous trial here. We had one entire generator for the first oh. down already, and now we are talking about two stages so far. Patience game being oh. played. That's going oh. to be an M1 onto Hardwell now trying to get mm. rid of the chaos here. That's going to be Arima with the borrowed time effect. Buddy block coming oh. in, and that's going to be a double run, and actually nobody is going to take mm. it. Arima is going to run away. The Everybody. next body block coming in by Zeno. Really, really great teamwork here by Singularity. They are doing such a good job and wasted so much distance. Zeno still doing a very, very nice job so onto these body blocks. Arima, she got like now being stuck here as well. This is absolutely shining team play oh. from Team Singularity protecting Arima and trying the absolute oh. hardest, but it's no. not going to end successfully. And that's now oh. going to be bad news for the team because all so wow. that means wow. that you lost a lot of time on the survivor side here. Singularity sacrificing absolutely everything to keep this one survivor alive. Zeno is instead now just going to be tagged and this generator that was so close to completion will be now popped by the perk itself with Call of Brian applied on it as well. I just want to comment on how perfectly Nightlight played all of this, not talking about the faces, but the way he positioned his hooks. So, First, we started off the chase on the shack side of the map there, where four generators were available. So Nightlight not allowing these survivors, these survivors to work on any of those four generators. Then taking the hook on the top side of the map here. Also, I believe that was a failed gauge by Hardwell here. Then taking the hook to the to to the main building using agitation. Then instantly nullifying all the progress that was made on the opposite side of the map. That could not have been a more perfect early game for Nightlight. Now we see how unbelievably powerful. It Agitation is for this now reworked or the reworked add on nurse. It's helping out so so much. Nightlight constantly getting the exact positions that he wants. And with four stages and three generators remaining and one survivor dead, I see no way out whatsoever for Team Singularity to not be 4K or at least. Uh, yeah, 4k at, on at least zero generators remaining. We see the fake kick on the generators will straight back into Hardwood's deliverance, trying to capture Sniper off guard immediately. It's gonna be a very aggressive blink, but Hardwood is holding W. Has the speed bonus from the Anuk, from the self Anuk, so it's barely going to be enough. Knight that instantly gonna U turn back onto these generators, most likely planning to apply Pop Goes the Weasel and Call of Flying on the cracked generator, which is right in front of him. Yeah, this is a great setback onto Team Singularity here. Four stages so far, two generators completed. But the death has a huge impact. That's a huge chunk when we are talking about the spread generator pressure. They are now doubling the generator. Nightlight was just kicking, who's in the meanwhile calling Brian on this generator on the top right side. Considers going back onto this hill, Jen. He's looking at it, and that's actually going to happen here. Both survivor leaving great use of the flashlight here, but now aware that Virtual is around so that might be the next one and that's going to be through the pallet here great try by we won but not going to no, land behind the shack here so our nightlight is just going to try get the down as quick as possible here and oh, i don't beautiful. think yeah with this speed you don't need to be worried about the generators on the top side so still everything going according to the plan of team eternal they will finish another generator potentially but still sitting on yeah. two more objectives and the win condition of getting two survivors out of the door here.
Yo, all Knight that really needs to do now is tunnel out one more survivor to secure that he will be able to 4k this game. But all he needs is 10 stages overall. So even if a survivor manages to escape through the hatch and it's not a fresh survivor, this would still be in Eternal's favor. So all he needs to do now is get a hook on everybody and then start butchering because that is going to 100% secure the win condition for Nightlight. And now playing this for what is left of the forge then on the shack side of things still having three generators available with a hook right in the middle of it should not give a care in the world whatsoever about about main building as you see hardwell our injured survivor very smartly positioned by singularity of course because you don't want that injured survivor to go for the unhook meanwhile xeno is still trying trying to his best to sneak past nightlight's uh, control here but it's probably not going to be efficient if he's trying to stealth past but xeno no him is usually pretty aggressive on these one-man saves, but no is instead going to wait it out now still waiting for the right window of opportunity but nightlight should really just wait out this entire death here he still has three generators around all of them have been picked so all of their progress are completely nullified and we see call of brain also now uh, running out on his generator so nightlight is just gonna blink over but the generator is now at complete zero so these survivors have nothing left to do on this side of the map here xeno might be set might be found on this tile as it also was the survivor stealthing on this tile meanwhile we still have virtual dying on this generator and hard was trying his best to pop that pen ultimate generator but i don't think two survivors will ever be able to get past these two generators night xenon knows beautiful reverse by xeno here and night wow. perfectly knows one of these survivors will be working on main building generator and now he also knows where all of these survivors are so now it's the patience game xeno must save get the save on his own in order to win this, but it seems like Xeno is just gonna go back on the generator and they might try to go for a hat to save. Yeah, this is a good additional and alternative strategy for Team Singularity here. They do have a good progress onto these generators and they are actually impressing me with how efficient they are for the fact that they are already down by two survivors here. They have a very done a very good job with the generators here. We do see the extent of distance between the right side and the bottom left corner, which would be called seven by the competitive players. Now blinking over towards it onto the hill, trying to get a good view, but this survivor can't be found so we have to see a very nice split up now from team singularity pairing the generators between the top right side and the bottom left side they might also go for a reset here it seems to be the strategy mm. they are both uh, stealthing towards the main building you know just hiding in a locker real quick so actually behind <laughs> nightlight here who's not um finding any of these survivors yet so it's on edge here eternal definitely in the best position here nightlight very close to wrap it up as the best of five but there's still a lot of work to do and singularity is still in a good spot to actually come back and fight for it especially when this reset here is going to come through having a healthy heart world once again would be a really great setback for team singularity and coming back refreshed onto the generators meanwhile the objectives have been regressed but if there's one chance for you then it lays in this uh reset here yeah in order to also establish that reset they were going out of the way here they're crouching the entire way trying to not disturb any crows because nightlight definitely have the, has the eyes of a hawk and would instantly be able to tell where that crow is coming from and where that survivor would be stealthing we still see both of them hiding on this rock in the middle of nowhere so nightlight just needs to get one lucky glance over there and will instantly know where both survivors are but seems to be at a bit of a loss where these survivors could have reset is going to remain around these three generators not trying whatsoever to push a bit uh, towards the opposite side of the map where the generators are not located not trying to interrupt the, the reset at all and xeno and hardo are playing their absolute hardest now trying their absolute best in order to somehow approach these generators but nightlight should be able because of obviously Ning nurse of the blink ability should be able to hover across all of these generators that are still remaining and even if a survivor's down that will just be qualifying on the gen and most likely also fast faces on the survivors still trying to find a survivor n near this hill now and it should also be hardwell who's close to this generator meanwhile xeno is on the one in the corner on the hill if he has already made it that far but i think our survivors are still hesitating a bit to get anywhere close and this is looking much like a stalemate if you ask me 
Absolutely, yeah. This is now going to be the question who's making the next mistake, right? Is it going to be Singularity Survivor being caught and uh, located by Nightlight? And that's going to happen! Zeno is caught out on the edge of the map, trying to wait behind the corner, but Nightlight expecting that and finishing it off with a very, very quick down. So that's going to be the next hook stage onto um, Zeno here. That's hook stage number eight coming through now. And this and kill now, onto Zeno would be enough to really go for for the win condition for Eternal. So you just need to camp out Zeno, but it seems not yep. to be enough for Nightlight who wants to finish <laughs> it in a very great 4K by himself, not just taking the points that are already presented on the Hulk, also trying to finish it off with Hardwell here. Hardwell would need to get a generator, would need to unhook Zeno, and then both of them would need to escape here to go for the win condition. So that's all very unlikely. Singularity now playing against the odds here with the back to the wall. We do see that Hardwell has left the generator as well, so two points would be missing right there, and it's going to tie up around their neck more and more here because this is getting more and more difficult with any second that is now dropping. Nightlight holding the blink as well, looking back towards the hook there, and Mathis, I don't see a chance for them to yeah, turn this. Dyer, Dyer, I do have to tell you this is 100% BG for Team Eternal, or let's say 99, because all Nightlight needs to do now, he doesn't even need to care about the generators because of the nine stage game in the previous trial. Yeah. Nightlight yeah. literally only has to stand in front of the hook, and if Hard Hardwell does dare to go for the save, then that's just gonna be hit instantly. Then Hardwell will be stuck in the unlock animation, and then we'll just be hit right after. Yeah. Or even if Hardwell manages to break somewhat free, then that would also just be the down instantly with the blink, but. Nightlight still leaving this generator, maybe not totally sure on the win condition or just really greedy for this 4k. But that is going to be a, sort, a, a slight setback for Nightlight here. Ninth day, this, this is basically now the tie. Actually, not, no, it's not even the tie. I think it's already the win because every survivor has been hooked individually and it's already nine stages in contrast to the fresh escape in the previous game. So I think Eternal have already won no matter what. And yeah, Zeno is also going to be down as well. So. Unbelievable with Eternal and Singularity both dropping their own sets at the start with Xenobite, Plague and Artist, but still Eternal still coming out on top. It could have been 2 to 1 for Singularity after that Artist game if it was not 4v1 picking the wrong map. And with Xeno dying, it's going to seal the deal. 10 stages already in contrast to the 9 stages in the previous game. Even if Hardware escapes now, it is already over. Eternal have taken the winner's finals 3 to 1 and will advance right into the grand finals. So meanwhile, Singularity will drop to lower bracket and play against Sequence tomorrow for either spot number 3 or 2. Yeah, and this is crazy, right? If you lay it out like that, we had only one penalty today. Shadow first in the game, but yeah. this minus two onto the artist actually made a difference there by running it back. So oh, that's going to be there. something Singularity has to discuss there for the next one. But as you mentioned, yes. they have to face sequence now tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central European time, 1 p.m. Eastern time for the American friends. So already go mark this day in your calendar. We will see each other in 20 hours, basically, for the showdown between Singularity and Sequence. And if Singularity wins, we will have a rematch in one week in the grand the final with a best of seven so we can test even more who deserves to call themselves the winner here but it was one hell of a winner's final here a story of coming back a story of pulling together as a team finding the right response to a very very strong playing killer and also a story about getting a very spontaneous tactical approach onto things you're not expecting. For example, Eternal, when they were facing the unexpected plague add-ons on the side yeah. of Xeno there. It has been a wild ride today, and I believe Nightlight and his friends are going to celebrate very well about this grand final because that was not as easy as we have seen them dominating in the previous trials. We're quick before we are heading out here. Mathis, talking about tomorrow and the game against Sequence, what do you expect for tomorrow's game. I mean, we've already seen these two teams play in this very tournament, haven't we? With Xeno, as I've already teased it infamously, 4K sequence on four generators remaining. So they're, I'm expecting an insta-ban against Nurse, or insta-banning Nurse against Team Singularity, because that's that would definitely be the smartest thing to do after that, uh, after that resort here. 
But wow, I did not expect Singularity and Eternal to turn out this way. I was really expecting the exact opposite with how well Singularity have been doing recently. But Eternal once again proving us wrong. And Sequence tomorrow, I do think Singularity have the upper hand.